Here we go. Hey, this is Chase Sexton. You're listening to the Moto X Pod Show. What's up, you guys? Jeremy McGrath here. You are listening to Moto X Pod Show. Hey, hey, we are back after a week off. My apologies for taking a week off, but just couldn't quite make it happen while I was out in California. Sorry. I don't know. I guess one of our listeners said they didn't, we didn't tell them there was no show last week, which I feel like we did at the end, but. Yeah, so uh, I actually forgot that we were not doing a show because I'm just so used to, like, it's like a habit. Just Please tell them. me you drove all the way over here. God, no, great. I did not do that actually. But uh, I was I was in the pulp chat on Monday, and they're like, "What are y'all? Uh, who's on the show tomorrow night?" And I was like, "Oh, Dark hasn't told me yet." And the reason you hadn't told me yet is because there wasn't a show. So wow, <laughs> Oops. wow. Well, anyway, this is the Vital MX Moto X Pod Show presented by Race Tech and Yamaha Motor USA. We've got a lot to get into in episode three hundred seven tonight. St. Louis and the Triple Crown was quite eventful. We have even talked about Seattle. Uh, so we'll see what we can get into. The AMA Arena Cross Series also wrapped up. Kyle Peters is now five-time Arena Cross champion, tied with Budman. Be interesting to see if he decides to come back next year for a sixth. That was a really just down to the wire race. I think it went in with eight points, uh, eight point gap going into the last round. Pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I want to get into that. Then we've got three great guests, including Yamaha Star Racing's Jordan Smith, who is currently third in points in the 250 West. Twisted T. Hep Suzuki's Kyle Chisholm, who's going to join. We're going to talk about him making his 200th main event this past weekend. Uh, and then we'll talk to Justin Shanty. He's been Adam Cincerillo's mechanic. He's worked with the Alessis, all kinds of guys, been around a long time. And he has uh, called it, he left this last weekend, was his last race. He's going to NASCAR. I know Mathis ended up having him on also, but we'll, we got a few other things to talk to Justin Shanty about. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, in studio, you already heard Scotty Thompson. He's back working the cameras, YouTube chat. If his battery holds up on his phone, <laughs> never, pre- never prepared. Let sleeping dogs lie, man. <laughs> What's up, Scotty? What's going on, man? Uh, glad to have you back. And even I don't know why, but uh, glad to have you back. Yeah, I don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm glad to be back. Tired as hell. Yeah, you missed riding with all of us this weekend. Yeah, but I raced. So oh. I raced in California. I mean, you called that racing? Ooh. Okay, I, I mean. Spicy yes, I lined evil. up at a gate. The gate dropped, mm. and there was a guy that was about as slow as I was that we sort of were right there for the whole race. That's so. fun. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was not, I'm not in race shape where at did, all. Where did you, <laughs> where up, did you race at? What's going on, TJ? Oh, nothing much. Just still uh, just b- making every show that I can because, you know, I'm dedicated to this, and I'm no, I don't miss shows You're unemployed. Anymore. Oh, yeah, I don't have a job. Yeah. That's right. That's, that helps. That does help. Uh, I raced at Kern Raceway in Bakersfield, California. How was the track? It was pretty cool. It was like, oh, it's so ruddy. You know, it didn't feel that ruddy to me compared to like what we deal with. I mean, it was ruddy for California. But, but it's like, again, jagged. I was in such bad race shape. I got arm pumped so fast that I could barely tell you how the track was. I don't understand like, how people get I, arm pumped. Dude, it just, time. I mean, I don't understand either. If, I, if anybody understood it, we'd get rid of it. I just know the gate dropped and half lap in, my arms, I couldn't hold on anymore. So just on that real quick. Sure. Do you think it's a, like, I don't hardly ever get arm pump. My arms will get tired. Well, you hardly ever ride. Ooh. I ride every day almost when I'm home. Okay. Maybe that's why you don't get arm pump. That would help. But I ride pit bikes. bikes. Yeah, it's different. Still. Same anyway, time. But I'm just asking, I'm wondering if it, but I never have really suffered with arm pump that much. You think it's like a genetic thing that some people mess, deal with it more? Um, I think it's lack of comfort and being nervous or whatever, because when I'm not riding a lot, I'm just holding on for dear life. You know, last year when I was riding a lot and I was on the 350, I was most comfortable I'd ever been, and I never had arm pump. So I think it was confidence and just being comfortable. Yeah. I wonder if we could set the bike up different. Like maybe put some taller bars and get you stopped. Yeah, I've already hanging. raised the bars a little bit, but I just need to – I'm not riding. Like I've been hurt, so I, I don't know. Yeah. I've rode two or three times in the last couple months. That, that Did you get help. arm pump when you got back on the bike, Scotty? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, 
I uh, I did change my grips back to what I normally like. The, the bike, when I got the bike that I have, it had some like fatter grips on them. And now that I have some kind of thinner grips, I've noticed it less. Mm. But uh, yeah, I definitely was crazy as I did it. You know, I did a TCCRA and then I rode this weekend at Swan and I got more pumped just riding at the practice than I did in the TCCRA. So I guess it's just, I don't know if it's just a speed thing or yeah. you're on a track doing jumps. You just tighten up a little bit. I don't know. But well, we can talk about my Loretta's qual- area qualifier in a minute if you want. We'll get no, into it if you feel like it. But yeah, uh, first, I want to remind everybody that Vital MX, what'd you say? We don't care. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Vital MX does have a fantasy game, and there is a Moto X Pod Show League. Please go sign up, and uh, it's free. A lot of cool prizes. This past week's winner is from St. Louis is his use screen name is Jock, J O C K. And then last week's winner, once again, was. Dang it, I forgot the name, guy's name. He's won like three weeks in a row, though. Um, whatever. I don't have it wrote down. Oh so, my God, same way. Yeah, I know. Just so, so bad. But we're about to get into the Race Tech open discussion. Race Tech is the world's largest aftermarket motorcycle suspension modification company. They have over 35 years of experience providing factory level suspension to everyday riders. Race Tech gold valves provide a plush feel with drastically improved bottoming resistance and increased traction. All Race Tech products are 100% guaranteed and made in the USA. So visit racetech.com, find your local service center, go get to know your guy, your local guy, use them to service your, your suspension, put some new fluids in there, maybe respring them if, they're, if you feel like they're not where they need to be. Race Tech can help you out. Uh, let's jump into St. Louis just for a minute. Seven winners now in 2024 in Supercross. Finally got our, our six, sorry. I'm going to say six. Six winners, not seven. I'm looking ahead. I already know the future. I already have seen who wins the next race. But six as of now, Tomac finally gets a win going 1-1-1. Any, either of you remember when his last win was? How long ago do you think it was? Had to have been... Nashville last year? I feel like you looked that up. No, because he won the race before he... he yeah, I was going to say, was it in Colorado? <laughs> yeah. It actually wasn't Nashville. You are correct. It actually wasn't Nashville. No, because Chase won Nashville. Yep. Um, um you just said it so fast. I thought maybe you, you thought you knew. Yeah. But do you, I, yeah. TJ? I no, thought I, I, I knew. No, I uh, April 8th, Glendale last year. Almost a full Almost year, a year since he's won a race. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize that. Like, I didn't really process it. I, if you think about it, it makes sense because he got injured right after that. And, and he was lucky to get this one, and he won't get another one. Wow. That's okay. A is this take. like a real take? It's a real take. It was sizzling. Hmm. Why do you say that? Because I feel like that's about the best he's rode all year, and he says his ankle's good. He's and I, riding great. And I think. But uh, there's a. There's a a juggernaut of jet, the juggernaut. <laughs> I thought he was generational. He's generational. I don't know, man. I, I, I again, <laughs> I, I've kind of went with my heart over mm. my, my head sometimes with these things, but mm. like, Oh, he lays back. We're going to get, we're going to get a battle now. I think we're going to get a battle. Like I'm hoping I'm for, come on, man. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Scotty, tell me Eli's going to win another race, right? But you know what? Before we get... Well, no, let's stick on Eli. Ask me a question and then... Yeah. <laughs> I right. don't know why I'm surprised. Like Eli... Well, yeah, because I really don't care about your answer. Yeah, I know. Do you just think Eli can win on. another one? Don't even ask me. Um, Not can. Will he win another one? Will he win another one? We got to say can. Yeah, well, obviously he can. Yeah. He's, it's it's kind of like the... This year with Eli, I've, it's kind of been the uh, what was that the Toby Keith song? That I'm not I as don't good. Know, man. Why, I'm not as good on. as I once was when I'm as good once as I ever was. He's kind Never of heard of him. That's kind of been well, R.I.P. Toby. Toby. We, really? Yeah, he he passed away earlier this year. No idea. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, that's kind of how I look at this year for him. Like, he, he, when is lightning going to strike? When it strikes, you can't. I mean, it is what it is. But uh, wow. at underground a few weeks ago, <laughs> I, knew that, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Too soon, man. Too so soon. So awful. Oh, sorry. Um, so awful. But, I, oh. you know, if I were to say that he would win another one, probably be, I would say he has a good chance of winning Denver Redemption. But will he? I'll say yes. Yeah. God, it was Why are you so negative, TJ? I'm not negative. I'm just being the the the. So are realist. you saying that Eli's gonna or Jet's gonna win out then? I think that J- without Rex or or Barsha t boning him or <laughs> stupid like what do you call it like he, he broke the rules. I don't. I, I have nothing against the the Red yeah, Cross. Flag. We'll talk about that in a second too. But that didn't really even matter, anyways. But but I'm just no. saying, as far as as far as it goes, without something like that happening, if he just gets the races race. 
I think Jet could win out easily. Well, of course he could. No, no. I think that that's a high. It's no. a higher probability. Well, Eli of, is back. I think it's a higher probability. Eli's going to win the championship. Of Jet winning out <laughs> than Eli getting uh, another one. I will to to credit TJ, which I can't believe I'm doing that, but. Um, <laughs> Now that the now that the championship an idiot you are now that now that the championship has gotten down Stop back like into an idiot. you're the idiot don't be an idiot changed my life now that the championship has got back down to eight points Jet can't cruise like he was kind of starting to so to TJ's point I think there's more likely for him to try to win out whereas there was looking like there for a while that when he he was about to get a race lead in the points and that he might not have to win out. Then I think, he would, I think he would have seen him sail it in, but now with eight points, he's gonna try to win every race. So I, I you know, I mean, look, Eli's been, everybody's right. I love Eli has been recovering everybody. from that Achilles all year so far. And then he had the we now he, know he hurt yeah. his ankle. I'm not ready to to write him off from being able to beat Jet straight up. I'm not. We've been questioning it all year. What the hell's going on? He seems so off. He he's clearly he's kind of talked about having a lack of confidence at times. Not writing him back. And I feel like it's back. I, I'm, my mind is telling me, after he, seeing what I saw this last weekend, he's going to be a lot closer to the Eli of last year. So I do think we can start seeing him I think you're I think you're absolutely 100% right on that. But the problem was last year, there was no jet in the class. Okay. Well, well and we I'll, will I'll, find out with a few more rounds to get in two weeks. Also saying I'm not going to write him off, but, but or saying – Versus saying he will win another one against Jet straight up. I mm. think that that's two big things. So are you saying he will beat Jet or he could? Because obviously he could. No, I'm going to say Eli will beat Jet. No, Just you, straight up. Straight up. He yeah, will at, be, at least one race, yeah. I think he'll, yeah. Like I'm, when, I'm talking about they both stay up and sure. they race. Yeah, I think they, he will. And, and I then, think it might not be at Foxborough in two weeks, but by the last couple rounds, he'll be a lot closer to that 100%. And then, yeah, I, I think we're going to see Eli go toe-to-toe and, with Jet. And I want to say... Because I'm hoping for that, I, it would, the next time that I'm at the um, what do you call it press day, and I want to ask you, uh, him a question, which will never happen. I'm just making a joke at, towards one of our friends, but I want to say that Eli. I'm not taking anything from him. I think Eli is as good as Eli can or maybe has been. I just think that unfortunately, everybody in the class is having to deal with something that nobody predicted was going to happen. Moto X Pod Show at gmail.com. Let's get your thoughts on any of our topics, uh, our segments coming up. If you want to get in with the prox highs and lows or the Evans coolant emails, we want to hear from you guys. We've got those coming up. Moto X Pod Show at gmail.com. Don't forget to go to vitalmx.com and sign up for the Fantasy League. Uh, Yamaha Motor USA is also a presenting sponsor of the Moto X Pod Show. A reputation for dominance. It doesn't happen overnight, it's built over decades. The YZ story is 50 years of iconic machines and groundbreaking innovations. Yamaha's new 50th anniversary edition YZs pay tribute to a half century of championship winning performance wrapped in stunning retro style. Check them out at YamahaMotorsports.com. Thanks to Yamaha for this past weekend at the Loretta's Qualifier. I got another bike delivered to me. Got to ride another one of the retro 450s. Amazing 450s. Stock. It was really, really good. More than I can handle. Hadn't really practiced any starts. Didn't have a whole shot device. Gate drop. Came out of the gate. Almost looped out. Yeah, that hey, was so somewhat well, embarrassing. We had a good good stuff. Thanks to Mike Ulrich for bringing the bike out. And yeah, he fell actually in the right when his race hurt his shoulder. <laughs> oh, that sucks. He's a yeah. He's not his. He can't hardly move his lift anything or put any pressure on it. So hopefully Mike heals up. Go ahead. What you got? Um, one of our listeners in the live chat, Niall Lates, asked something about did Vince get in a fight with a dig dug. I have known nothing of this. Haven't heard a word, so can't either. answer that. That's what he said. So, uh, all right. Also at St. Louis, Levi Kitchen wins again. The last four races, he's gone one, two, one, one. He has a fifteen point lead over RJ and twenty six over Jordan 16. Smith. Huh? Did I do bad math? Yep. Okay. Oh, look wow. Up. Look at look Scotty. Up. You mean to look it up? Nope. Yeah. No. 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 Nope. I, want, I, want. I got it right here. But anyway, Levi Kitchen has definitely elevated his game. The guy is. Pretty dominant right now. I want to ask Jordan what he thinks about that when we get him on here a little bit. If if he agrees with me, there's like if he's made a step. But Levi, I think Levi wins this championship. I'm pretty pretty confident in that. What do you guys see different out of him? Uh, I think a lot of it's confidence and just a little bit of maturity. 
But yeah, TJ, what are you seeing different out of him? Well, I, I think the maturity, and a lot of people talk talk about Levi as being like newer to the class because he did kind of start out late. But he is quite a bit. He's at the older edge of the guys in the class, right? Mm-hmm. For the you yeah. know, so he has a, a leg. Points. Yeah, a the leg other up. coach is sixteen. That's oh, what I got confused right. on. Well, Not bad. Let's let's, I, meet, I let's meet Scotty for our two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two, two minutes. Time minute out. Time out. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyways, the yeah. I think it's just the maturity coming in. I think he's comfortable and and feel good, ride good kind of thing. Yeah. And then the people he's training with. That's true too. And and Scotty, we always you know, once you get those wins and you get the confidence, a lot of riders just feed off that. I kinda think that's another thing that's going on is now he's he just feels like I'm gonna get the, the start, I'm gonna be up front, and it doesn't seem like anybody can keep up with him, right? Like even our, I feel like RJ was riding a little bit like last year in the years past where he's he's starting to push a little bit harder than he mm-hmm. should to try to keep up. Do you, do you, yeah, oh, I, uh, no, I, I just think that, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, it was kind of like, hey, you know, it's who there's not really one of the young rising shining stars that are that were, everybody had a real expectations to kind of dominate, especially when that class had been that the last few years. So it was kind of looking to, you know, which one of the more seasoned guys is going to uh, step up and, you know, and take the championship. And it looked like Jordan and RJ were going to be those guys. And Levi was kind of hanging in there and then to see the step that he's made recently, man, he's, he, he, nobody can touch him. And it, in those last couple of races that he's had, and, and I think he's become that guy is like, Oh, well, you know, he's, he's the next one to watch now because he's, he's finally gotten it together. And, and, uh, he's nobody in the two hundred and fifty class has done, has dominated as much as he has this year. So. Yeah, he, again, at the, the first couple rounds of the season, I felt like they were a lot closer, RJ mm-hmm. and Jordan, him, and something has shifted. At least it feels that way. That change from Yamaha to Kawasaki was clearly good for him. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of, you know, he didn't really like the process of how Star Yamaha does things and how the training was every day. He wanted a little more freedom, and again, when you're happy in your environment, that helps too, so... Yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. Uh, I, I really want to get Levi on pretty soon, but wasn't he was he on Pope last night? I think yeah. he was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll hold off on that. I thought about reaching out to him, but then, yeah, he was on Steve's show. So you want to double dip? I try not to. We're doing that with Justin Shanty, but um, that's just the way it worked out. But that's kind of like a yeah circumstantial thing. Yeah, I really I wanted to get him on because he's leaving, and obviously Steve did too, and that's I think this is the best opportunity, so we'll make that happen. But yeah, I try not to double dip, as you say, on with guests with Steve. Um, we will talk about the Barsha jet thing and the expert informed check-in, so we're going to hold off on that. Let's talk about the Red Cross situation. Race two, five riders penalized on the white flag lap. Let's, TJ, let's get your viewpoint on it. Like, what do you see was right? What was wrong? What 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 are your thoughts? It's real easy. Okay, the flag is out. It doesn't matter if they put it out and there was nobody there. The flag is out. It's just like 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 if a light is red at a red light. And there's no cars, and you go through it. You broke the law. I can't. I, I can't argue with that fact. Now, and that and that, it, it is what it is. If they had the light pole on the side of the road and you didn't see it and you went through it, you still ran it. You know what I'm talking about? It. You know, if the stop sign was behind a bush a little bit and you didn't look over because you're looking at your phone. You still get a stop. Yeah, but you, okay, those guys weren't looking at their phones. They were racing. <laughs> looking at the, the ruts in the front flag, of them. The flag. I understand, but the flag was in a. Terrible spot. Absolutely. And if it, it happened to one rider, maybe two riders, I'll blame the riders. Happens to five riders, that's at fault for the flag. That's, that's, yes. It was in a bad position. Yeah, it, it is. They but, have to adjust it. And they need – the AMAs should come out, in my opinion, and say, yeah, we'll, we'll, do our, we'll do better next time, but that doesn't negate the fact that, of the penalty. Scotty? Um, the only thing that I – is it's obviously has been talked about in all the recaps and everything, but – the only thing that I haven't really heard is, in my point is, you know, if it had been a yellow flag, they could have still jumped, correct? Mm-hmm. The situation at hand where Vince was stuck down at the bottom, the Red Cross doesn't even make any sense. Why, if someone's stuck in the bottom, but that's, that, why, I know it. I know it doesn't matter. It's I know irrelevant. It, I'm not saying that the points, like I, 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 they, they made a violation. They got the points docked. That's a fact that they, you're right. They jumped on the Red Cross flag. I just don't understand why right, I was out. Red Cross it doesn't flag, make yeah. any sense. Honestly, if they roll it, they're more likely yeah, to right. hit that's him exactly, than if they jump it. That's yeah. exactly my point. Like, yeah. okay, let's, oh, he's stuck. Okay, let's make everybody roll, have no idea where he is, and, and hit him. Or, or it just if you have a yellow flag, then they just jump over him and nothing happens. So my point is, is obviously, 
yes, they jumped on a red cross. Yes, that's a penalty. Yes, they should have gotten them. But why why was that flag out? Like that so didn't make you, any sense. Like I do I feel like the AMA should come out and apologize basically. It's like, hey, we screwed up. It's I feel like it's on them. The flag should have been down and, at the bottom of the and, jump, and, probably the turn before. Yeah. And plus but, it was it was like Hey, here's the well. It's like, they they held it out because <laughs> that's a change they made a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think. A couple, yeah. yeah. But I don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why they did it or whatever. Like I, I agree with you. Maybe they should come out and say maybe more jumps should have the blinking red lights on the bottom of, at the base of them, which I think that would be. I mean, it, that cannot be that expensive. What have. about something instead of the f- leader lights? Let's put something on the bike, like on the and maybe this is not realistic but if there was a little that is something better. on the light on the handlebar that's okay red red flashing for this or a yellow flashing for a, for a yellow flag just to give the guys a heads up that there is something on the track pay attention and helmet communication but then, of course, then of course the guys on the other side of the track like would it be set up where like everybody gets the red flash and you don't have any idea where mm-hmm. it is still or would it only be in that section that'd be very complicated so in hel- not- in helmet that's never going to happen. But Nobody wants that. But here's that. the problem. If Everybody you, wants that. No, I, no, teams don't. Riders don't want it. Teams hey, don't, here's a question for you. You they talk, don't want it. You talk about the in-helmet communication. Mm-hmm. So if a guy on the other side of the track that's four lanes from it that's not going to get there before it's gone, is he also going to hear in his helmet? It'll, yeah. it'll say Sector 7. <laughs> and you yellow. want these guys... <laughs> There's there's what eight lanes on a supercross track does, nine then tops. You think, then they have you ever lane, about where, what sections what? Yeah. They have no, lane seven. What section? They, they can't figure. They I, I, honestly the simplest solution is the flagger should have been on the other side of that turn before the, you know where they sit before they make the turn or at least a yellow. Super simple. We've had flaggers throughout the history of motocross and racing. You just got to put them in the right spot. And I've, I heard the you're right about that. And I've heard people say, well, only certain flaggers have the red card, which is fine. Put a guy with a yellow. Right there, and getting their attention. Yeah, because if you're time, if sure. you're in the corner with a yellow, the guys are going to look. Oh, oh, there's, oh, a, there's red a red cross. Yeah. yeah, I think I you're right. I think you're right. I'm going to give you credit for that. You're not an idiot. I mean, I don't think I ever thought I was. I mean, we did. Nobody thinks that they are, but <laughs> apparently, everybody's peers <laughs> thinks that they are. We all think each one of us is an idiot. So, no, you don't. You don't think I think you're an idiot? No, I know you don't. What? How do you know what you know my thoughts? Yes, I, I know that there's no way you can think I'm an idiot. Thing. It's impossible. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, we got like eight minutes before Jordan comes on. So Nile is not just a uh, river in Egypt. Loretta's is stupid. Out of your reach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very, very like I told Lewis Phillips it's a today. Hot like, take. Loretta's I said is if stupid. there's a percentage less than zero percent, that's what I have of a chance to make it through the regional. Like the Kiefer's were like, oh, you're being so negative, and with an attitude like that, you're never gonna do it. Like, okay, my area that I raced in California took twelve. There was only seven people. Not a problem. Made that one. Somehow I made it through. But the guys that like first through fourth in my class were so far gone by the first lap that I thought I was winning my class because they gated us Woo. with like the plus thirty. He thought, and those guys were so fast. I was like, oh, this had to be like the other class. Then I came off and got my score, and I was like fifth. I went, well, where were the other guys? <laughs> so there was like four or five of those guys that fast in my class, plus the four or five or ten guys that already qualified from the other area qualifiers that are going to go to Paula for that regional. Yeah. So there's probably going to be 10, 15 guys that are that much faster than me, and then they take four. Yeah. Four freaking riders. Loretta's is not set up for guys like us. But it's not supposed. It's, it's, not, it's not supposed to be that. set up for slow people. <laughs> it's. It's. I mean, I don't know why he's being a dick. But I'm calling myself slow. No, I mean you obviously were pointing that at him, and it's uncalled for. It no. would be nice if they did have <laughs> skill level classes for all age groups, but it'd be two week long. But, but it's event, not so. But it's not for that. No, like, it's no. not. It's not. It's and I'm not upset best. about it because I never really thought I would qualify. That's your problem. Yes. <laughs> I mean, go look at the guys that has won the class that you were trying to. Look Going. at the guys that got like twelfth in the class. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and like the exactly. Texas, the, in the for the Texas area, I have to race like Michael Dean Gage, who's he had he said his well, he never he's got never a, got points, so he will points, be racing. Yeah. He raced, I think he won one of the areas in my class last year, and the guys in way way Didn't above he my school. podium. A moto at Loretta's, he got like top five. Yeah, I think so. I, I think he I think got top five. But oh, top five. Okay. Regardless, uh, as a novice. 
which I am, mm-hmm. even though you think I'm an intermediate. I think you are an intermediate. Um, I'm moving on. There's no chance. If you're, that's a whole other thing. Go ahead. And and as I've heard these complaints before. I love the. It's forty dollars for the class. Oh yeah, here's twenty dollars so you can have this piece of paper. Oh, I know. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look, you just helped fund. Uh, MX Sports to pay for them to give a trophy to ask, somebody. Who's I'm going to ask Davey for my twenty bucks back. Be like, the race is only twenty dollars. No, no, it was twenty dollars for the for the form. the form, and then it was forty for the to sign up. And you have to ask for the twenty dollars for the form. Yes, for it's, the for the sign up. So sheet, you sign up for the race, bucks. and then there's a piece of paper that you get with the race <laughs> that you have to pay for. That that's your Loretta. So you can go race the race and not sign up to try to make Loretta's. Oh, like you can just race the race. But if you want to try to do Loretta's, you have to fill out the Loretta's entry stuff. Oh. I've obviously and never then, tried to make Loretta's. The, I know the my limitations. The regional is even more expensive, right? Isn't it? It's 100 bucks, I think. For the for the race, for the class? I think it is. I and think. then probably another 20 for the sheet again? Well, the sheets used to be $10. So well, they were 20 They're 20 I know that, but I'm saying, uh, so I don't know what the prices are now. But no, it was $100 for the entry for the Loretta's yeah. paper plus the race entry fee. Yeah, like... ML was telling me today, oh, yeah, I think you can make it. I think he told Kiefer or somebody said that he's like, I think he can make it. Maybe it was Lewis that told me that. I was like, no. Like, yeah, maybe if nobody shows up for the regional, they just decide not to go. Yeah, that's not how that works. Yeah. Well, I, there's a chance that a lot of the real fast guys won't go there for because people in California aren't going to be able to get off for a week to go to Calif- go, go to Tennessee probably. So a lot of the Why? fast guys may not why wouldn't they be able to get off for a week if, if just because they live in California? It's a long ways. Oh, okay. So, like they may not be able to get off a week uh, off a week for work or whatever to be able to go. So race you don't think people go to Loretta's from California? No, I say a, a lot of the fast guys in your class oh. have families, have jobs, have things. That I they think have. that's a very unrealistic <laughs> viewpoint. No, I'm not saying that you're going to make it. Okay. I'm, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. We're not. Yeah, none of the that. fast guys are going to show up because they got to work, man. No, I'm saying yeah. your chances are they're going to be there. Bit, bit, <laughs> Tad bit better because a couple of them can't. Yeah, like two of yeah. the twelve. It was two. Yeah, exactly. Hey, there's a real easy fix. Practice for all of that. Get better. You just got to do a little, little more of this. Practice. If stuff. I had done a little more of that Sunday, I would have just like whiskeyed off one of the jumps and. You launch, don't know until you know. Launch that Yamaha into the stratosphere. You just get huh. Doc to start training you. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I what's training. the next? I just got to get back I'm to it. actual riding. <laughs> oh, what's the like next topic? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I this is the first time I've ever decided I was going to try to do, make the road to Loretta. Well, you kind of got derailed. You like if, if you were riding like how when you start when you was like, hey, I'm, I'm doing the troll training. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do the Loretta's. If you stayed on that trajectory that you were on when you started that, hundred no, hundred percent, you'd be in a better chance to do that. But you've kind of you've had some injuries and some this and some that. You changed your bike and you're riding. You know, you were you weren't even riding your bike at that race, were you? Uh, no, I was just riding a fully stock Yamaha. So, yeah, I mean, not, is, that wasn't, which wasn't is what set mine up? is, basically. I just didn't yeah, adjust what, the suspension or anything. Yeah, like, exactly. It wasn't so. my bike. I rode it I rode it at Glen Helen yeah. Tuesday, and then, yeah, I raced it Sunday. Yeah, I was, exactly. I so, Glenn I think Helen. if you'd stayed on the trajectory, sucks. you would have, you, you'd be in a better place. Yeah. Uh, we got a first guest of the night on, so oh. let's get to that, and then we'll get back to how Glen Helen Back sucks? to how Glen Helen and I both suck at riding dirt bikes. But tonight... Guts Racing, Andy Gregg and the Guts Racing crew continue to provide the best seats and foam available. If you want the same seats used by Rockstar, Husqvarna, Hep Suzuki, and many more, then you need Guts Racing. They have numerous color possibilities, staple or Velcro installation options, wing seats, and the best foam in the business with a Phantom Ultralight Seat Foam. Don't forget, they have complete seats for the Talari and Super 73 and covers for the Suron and Segway. They strive to ship orders within 36 hours, so visit GutsRacing.com and order today. Tonight, Guts Racing brings us Yamaha Star Racing's Jordan Smith. What's up, Jordan? Oh, what's up, guys? You doing good? Feeling good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. You good. excited a about a week? Testing. Yeah, you excited about a weekend off? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we only went back to the racing for two weekends, so uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's uh, it's always nice to get a weekend off, go play some golf. That's true. I, for some reason, I wasn't thinking about that. You already had been off for a little bit, so you probably are actually ready to get racing. Yeah, yeah, kind of for sure. Um. Look, the season. Hold, hold on a second, yep. Jordan. Would you would you be willing to take anybody in the field in a golf game? I feel like you're you're probably one of the more polished guys when it comes to golf. Yes, I'll tell you. I want to. I do. I want to do like a 
a Riders golf tournament. Like, mm. let's televise it. Let's like live stream it or something. That'd be sick. What are, What are you like? <laughs> oh, plus, we all play golf, anyways. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Are you like a plus? What are you like? Plus four? Plus five? Uh, my handicap right now is like a three. Nice. Yeah, that's that's really yep. good. It's better. I've never even sniffed at anything inside of ten. So that's how many over par <laughs> you are, right? Yeah. So he's probably so, shoot, he probably typically yeah. shoots like seventy five, seventy six. The one game I yeah. played, I was like. I don't know. I feel like I was in the hundreds. 75, 76 over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, were play, we were playing on the Oculus the other night, and I, I shot par. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, when I played Tiger Woods on there you the go. PlayStation. <laughs> I'm yeah, I we, I'm a, I'm a kill we golf, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, Jordan. So uh, third in points right now. Coming off of last year, you know, you had a little bit of an injury. How How is the wrist and the thumb holding up? Uh, yeah, everything's good with the wrist and the thumb. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. Um, just kind of, uh, you know, the wrist was a pretty big deal in like 2019, and that still kind of just, you know, the thing is always going to kind of be there lingering a little bit, but it doesn't bother me day to day. And, okay. Uh, same thing with the thumb. Uh, but yeah, from uh, whenever I crashed and hurt it in outdoors last year, yeah, the, all that's um, all good. So uh, no no problems there, and uh, had a healthy off season and had a pretty healthy season so far too. Yeah, you've been riding really well. I mean, there's been a few moments that I feel like have kind of cost you the little bit of point deficit you're in. And um, A2 in the Triple Crown, that second race. And then obviously we're going to have to talk about Seattle for a minute. But those two moments really kind of obviously cost you the gap that you have right now. Um, Overall, though, you feel like you've been riding really well. I mean, starts have been a little bit of a struggle here and there. But you feel like, are you pretty happy with the way you've been riding? Uh, yeah, uh, I've been, I've been happy with the way I'm riding. Uh, the starts have definitely been a little bit up and down. Uh, I think that, you know, I had the starts really, really dialed in before the season started. I felt really good. And, uh, before the triple crown of A2, I kind of just like got over the gate and just didn't feel comfortable. Mm. Um, and like, I had just felt like so good, like almost didn't even have to think about anything like all off season in those first couple of races. So um yeah it's like almost like almost like golf like you almost want to swing thought you almost want a thought like over the gate you know and uh, I kind of lost that and uh it took me a little bit to get comfortable again but uh, I think they've been better these last few weekends uh Seattle was pretty good and then this weekend I had a bad one in the first in the first main but pretty good in the second and third so um yeah it's uh it's tough to get good starts man it's like everyone's so good and uh man Levi's been on fire with the starts too so yeah uh, got to try and figure out how to beat him off the gate. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, Seattle, you know, the, the A2 triple crown, like because of the triple crown format, I was kind of able to salvage what could have been a lot worse night than it was. Mm-hmm. But, um, but Seattle was tough. Uh, you know, we were still like right in it up until then. And, um, there's a tough track and, uh, was just kind of hanging around behind, uh, Levi there with, you know, a few minutes to go and I had caught him a few seconds in the, in the laps leading up to my crash and, um, just kind of wasn't really focused on trying to catch him. I was more or less just trying to focus on hitting my lines and, and stuff, but, uh, that track could, could kind of jump up and bite you in a second. So, uh, that was, that was tough, but, um, yeah, we live to fight another day and, uh, we'll just keep trying to do the best we can. There's a couple things I want to ask you about starts based off your response a minute ago. One, you said you felt really good going into the season, but then there was a moment where you started feeling uncomfortable. What was it specifically that felt uncomfortable? Was it something with technique felt off, or just once you got into racing, the bike setup felt off? What was it? Uh, no, more just like um, just it wasn't really like bike setup. Like we didn't change anything there. It was really just like um, – I was, I had got a good feel, um, in the off season of like kind of where my body position was at and, um, and being able to, to charge off the gate, really, like really drop the clutch hard. And, um, the, our bike is so fast. It's really hard to con- kind of control off of that. Great. And, uh, I just, like I said, I was like, kind of had them so dialed. I wasn't really needing to think about too much as far as like technique and stuff goes I was just kind of clicking them off and uh yeah I don't I really don't know I couldn't tell you I just like uh, I think my my tech my body position just like slowly over time had gotten a little bit off from where it was in the off season and 
I literally just lined up one day and I was like, man, I just don't feel right. And I, I couldn't figure it out. It felt like the more I leaned forward, the worse I felt, the more I leaned back, the worse I felt. I just like couldn't get it figured out. And I uh, just kind of went through a little bit of a slump for a few weeks. And, uh, and, uh, but then after Phoenix, I kind of got through it with Phoenix. I got pretty decent starts there. I think I came out second or third in the main um, and uh, came out second or third in my heat as well. So I kind of got through it at Phoenix, but didn't feel comfortable over them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then during that break, I worked on them. And uh, even I had uh, Brian Johnson from MTF kind of, we worked on starts a little bit one day that we rode there to kind of help me get um, get back comfortable. He's kind of the one that got me into the, the right position during the off season. So, okay. uh, yeah, just had him kind of look, look back over it and see, and he's like, yeah, I think you're just kind of too far back again. So, uh, <laughs> got back up more over the front and it was like, bam, there it was, okay. Awesome. Uh, it was a simple fix, but it was just, a like a weird, a weird feel. And, uh, yeah. The other question I have, and you touched on it, about how fast the star Yamahas are off the start. And that's been kind of the way things have been for the last couple of years. It appears from outside that, Pro Circuit at Kawasaki's have kind of upped their game a little bit in that area and gotten a little closer. It doesn't feel as though the Yamahas have quite the advantage they used to. Do you agree, disagree, or indifferent? Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely, you know, obviously every team's been chasing star for better part of about 10 or so yeah, years now sure. uh, in the in the, um, in the the power category. So um, I think that, you know, uh, over time, everyone is going to get closer. And I think that, you know, that's probably the case. They definitely figured something out with, um, with Levi and with Cameron and, and Hamaker's getting good starts too on the East coast. So, um, yeah, they figured something out with the starts. And, uh, so you just got to be that much better, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Hey Jordan, you know, you mentioned at the beginning of the year after testing, you were, you were ready to go and it showed. And then you found, you said you found some uncomfortability, with do you agree that this year of tracks is like an on average has been the most inconsistent conditions and hardest conditions to race on? Is that any part of it? And what is your overall view of just how gnarly the tracks have been this year? Yeah, um, yeah, they've been really gnarly. Uh, you know, it's it's tough. We've had so many open stadiums this year, and it seems like every time you look at the weather, it doesn't matter what it says a week before. Whenever it gets the week of, it's like some sort of chance of rain on race day and the day before. So, um, you know, I think that Dirt Works has just been trying to scramble and, and give us the best track of that they can. Um, but it's tough, you know, we got, uh, it's, it's crazy, honestly, just, um, like at A2, we did press day there. Um, and the track, it had rained, uh, earlier that week and, um, the track was really, really like you could tell it was soft. Like you could tell from the earlier press that there was like some holes and stuff. But we went out; it, it had dried up, so the dirt was dry, but it was soft underneath. And um, we went out. The 250 group went out. There was I don't know, maybe 12, 12 of us out there. So, and you know, we were hitting this rhythm section, and it got rutted up a little bit, but nothing crazy, like nothing bad at all. And then the 450 group went out, and there was probably about the same amount of them. And by the time we got back onto the track, the whole rhythm section was just like so rutted. So it's just like the torque and the like the power that the 450s have, I think are just tearing up the tracks so much more now. And um, and yeah, it's a combination of that and then just the open stadiums with soft, like just, I mean, it's been raining all across the U.S. I feel this year. So it's just been it's been tough for the track guys and you know, they've been doing the best they can this weekend. They were just out there all night long, just prepping the face of that triple and the finish line and trying to give us a, a track that we're not just trying to survive on, but it's, you know, they can only do so much. So it's been tough. It's been really tough too, to, um, I kind of talked about it in the press conference a little bit this weekend, but it's been tough to, to kind of replicate. I mean, you can't really replicate those soft conditions at practice. Like, even whenever it rains or something, you go to the practice track, it still has that hard base to it. And uh, so it's really hard. So, you know, sometimes um, I feel like on our older bike, um, you know, they had so much data on last year's bike that, you know, they kind of had it dialed in for all those conditions where this year the bike is really similar, but is a little bit different. And we just haven't quite got it like fully dialed in for those really soft conditions. 
uh, sometimes we've been getting better, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely tough to try and test a new bike whenever um, it's hard to to replicate those conditions at practice. Yeah, that's that, you know that's a good point. That's what I was going to ask next. Is is you know you mentioned that the dirt work screw is kind of scrambling around, but uh, you guys in the in your mechanic team have to be doing the same. And then not only that, then there's a couple of rounds where you guys go second, so the track is worse than what you've ever used to before. Like, yeah, it's got to been a total fire drill almost all year. Yeah, yeah, it has for sure. It's been, uh, and I feel like every round has been like somewhat similar, like rutted wise, but they've been so different as well. You know, like you've had, um, you know, obviously San Fran was just a complete mutter and just survival. Um, but then, you know, you go to San Diego and by the time the main event came around, like the main line was pretty dry and it was, but it was still really slick. That dirt was slick. It was really hard packed, but it was like one rut around the whole track, you know? And then, you move on to a track like uh, like this weekend, and it was like the tackiest dirt I've ever felt in my life. You know, like our bikes felt slower in it because it was so tacky that it just like you got no wheel spin. Um, if you came up just a little bit short on a jump, it was just so sticky that it really grabbed your bike uh, a lot differently than, you know, a track like Phoenix that was really hard packed or our practice tracks or, you know, um, even like uh, like San Diego was, where it was more harder, slick than this weekend. It was so soft and and tacky. It was just like really like you had to be on point. Yeah, track conditions this year feel like they've broke down a lot more than any other year. It, it seems like it's getting worse, and that's a big topic of discuss, discussion that we have on all these shows, and we discuss all the time. Is, you know what could make the racing better? What can keep the track? What would allow the tracks to hold together better? As a racer, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, you know, a lot of torque, as you said, especially with the four fifties. What would you do to make track racing and track conditions better if it, if you had control? You have any thoughts? Uh, no, nah, I've thought about it. I haven't really came up with any good ideas. So, <laughs> um, I don't know. It's uh, you know, I think that it's just kind of the way it goes. Like, I, I don't feel like last year was nearly this bad. You right. know, we had a couple rounds that were, you know, soft, but there's not much you can do whenever mother nature decides to rain as much as it has this year. You know, like, like I said, the, I feel the entire United States has been, um, pretty, pretty wet this, uh, winter and just a lot of rain. So, um, I, you know, I talked to the dirt works guys this weekend and they said that, it poured all day in St. Louis Monday on mm-hmm. that dirt before they got it moved into the stadium. So there's really, you know, not much you can do there. I mean, maybe, you know, I've heard rumors about, you know, them not putting the lime in it and whatever, you know, in an indoor stadium, maybe they could bring that back. I don't know. You know, I'm not part of that conversation. So yeah. um, I'll just keep trying to, to ride whatever track, uh, whatever track they give us the best I can. That's really all you can do. And, we're gonna let's get the Seattle thing out of the way and track conditions played somewhat of a part in it. I think you you cross rutted, uh, landed on a tough block and into the, uh, the camera. I guess is what that was, and that led to another crash. And then you know you you got back on the track pretty quickly. And you, I know you released a statement about the situation. I will admit when I was watching it live from uh, the hotel I was at, I, I was like, oh shit, he's he's loopy, man. He's Maybe he had to be concussed. You know, tweet, tweet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for those that maybe didn't see your, your statement, uh, just kind of walk walk us through that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I went down um, and obviously got some, some whiplash there. And uh, the bar pad went right underneath my rib cage and uh, just completely, like, just all the air was gone and couldn't, couldn't get a breath for probably at least 30 seconds. And I was – I felt seconds away from passing out on the side of the track there just because I couldn't breathe. Um, but yeah, well, you know, there was a lot of speculation that maybe I hit my head because I made some mistakes after that and stuff. But um, no, I, I didn't. I felt fine. I wasn't, you know, I knew what was going on. It just, um, I mean, the track was tough to even ride normal. Um, and then after you have a crash like that, get back on, the bars were bent, you know, I'm scrambling. Like, I'm, obviously, I'm not happy with myself and not happy with what just happened and just feel the championship slipping away and all that Mm. stuff. So, um, you know, and then uh, I saw Levi coming around to, to lap me at first. I didn't know it was him behind me. Um, I had just passed 
uh, Dylan Walsh, like right after I got up. And uh, so I, I heard, like, I thought it was maybe him still behind me. Um, and once I realized it was Levi, I went to let him around in that rhythm and jumped off the track again and land on the tough block. Um, and then uh, whenever I got back on the bike, uh, the tough block was stuck in between like my wheel and the frame, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't get off of it. And you see me actually like stop and I had to shift down the first gear to have like enough power to get off of the tough block. Um, and whenever I did, I was like so focused on getting off of that. Like I couldn't get it, couldn't get it. And then I finally got it. And I just shot onto the track and obviously everyone saw someone clip me and then I'm trying to keep it up. And someone else clipped me. So it was just like a snowball effect, I would say. Okay. And yeah. um, I was pretty, you know, not, uh, maybe not thinking clearly just because of, uh, because of um, just throwing away the sure. championship. You know, so more, we've been more mental, on. yeah, more mental than a yeah. physical thing. Like, yeah, uh, watching yeah, well, it. Yeah, and and like the jumping off the track, like the reason I crashed there is because, I mean, that rhythm section, I'm, I'm sure most people <laughs> saw videos of behind it, but it was just like filled with ruts and my handlebars are twisted. And I mean, it's hard enough to go straight through that section with straight handlebars, you know? And then after you just take a huge hit like that and you have twisted handlebars and you're trying to let Levi go around and as Levi's going around, you're just like, are you kidding me? I'm getting lapped by the guy like trying to beat right now you know yeah. and just jumped off you know made another mistake and jumped off the track so uh yeah it sucks well i appreciate you kind of letting us know that because again watching it you know like the second crash i was like well that was it it looked it looked like kind of like a silly little crash and then you when you were dealing with the tough block from the tv it was kind of almost like well he's not even looking when he pulled out there so it's good to get your yep. viewpoint so you can explain it because yeah we if, it, perception is not always accurate well, if we had been on that track you would have thought that we'd all been concussed for the our entire oh, <laughs> before I, the race yeah. even started exactly. so yeah i would have just exactly. stayed, there, stayed down after yeah, the first yeah. One. well I, <laughs> yeah I want to say just your recollection of the whole thing makes me believe that you didn't have a concussion because I had a concussion on the track one time and my wife said it was the fastest lap after I got up she's ever seen me do. Like I had no regard for my own my own safety and was just going 900 miles an hour and I don't remember it. Well, you've never recovered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, no, you can actually see like if you go back and watch the video, yeah. like uh, whenever I got stuck on the tough block, you can see I had both feet down and then I actually – brought my left foot up to shift back down to first gear to be able to get off of that tough block before I shot back into the track. So yeah, uh, I was like, whenever I got back, I they told me that I needed to go to the Alpine star rig to go get checked out for a concussion. I was like, really? I'm, my head is fine. I just, my check, my lungs hurt, you know? Yeah. But then after watching it, I, I mean, I can definitely see why people thought that. So I'm, you know, I'm glad that they pulled me in and check that out and everything but uh yeah it was all good i passed no problems so, jordan, um, yep jordan smith tonight brought to you by guts racing hey jordan they i don't know if it was i think it was race day live or i can't remember if it was that or the broadcast but they did a cool little introspective piece on you and your family and they were kind of you know you were kind of going through your last few years and um obviously you know we i knew your career had had ups and downs but when i seeing them all kind of listed out in chronological order like that i mean it was nuts like you never really had a chance to to do anything for for a long time and you you know you you thanked the people that gave you opportunities i thought it was really cool to see um these last two years on star you've kind of finally showed the potential that you've had this whole time how much of that do you feel of your potential that you feel like you've reached and how much more do you feel like you have left uh yeah i mean um i feel like i still have a lot left i think that um you know i'm still learning and getting better every day it's something that you know uh i would say the technique and and that part of of riding like i've always had the heart and like the will to kind of do whatever i need to to try and win but um the technique and you know it took me a lot of hard work to kind of get to where i'm at as far as um my riding and uh my riding style and you know i've always crashed a lot as a little kid and everything so um, you know, it's, it's taken a lot to kind of get there. And, uh, I think I've, like, I've gotten a lot better with it. You know, my technique is way better than it was whenever, you know, I was an amateur and even whenever I first turned pro, I've, I've worked a lot on that. And, uh, yeah, I think that, um, that there's still a lot to, a lot to prove for me. I think, uh, you know, I need to 
it was a bummer. I felt like this is the year to kind of, you know, really go down to the wire for that championship. And it was looking really good there uh, the first few rounds. And uh, then, you know, they were still looking fine uh, up until Seattle. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, trying to keep just plugging away and just keep trusting the process of what we're doing and uh, working with the team and, and uh, just trying to be better every day. You know, like we still – I still have that drive and the want to – to win these things, to win the championship, to win races, and uh, and to do what what it takes. I mean, it takes a lot of hard work to be able to be in that position. So um, I still have that drive to, to put the work in day in and day out, try and keep plugging away at it. So does it – do you catch yourself when you say trust the process and, like, face palm? Like, I can't believe I said that. Because, you yeah, know, that's like, sure. that's, that's, that's like a running joke that all the guys <laughs> yep. say, we just trust the no, process. I said it. Yeah, I said it <laughs> partly because of that. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm just trying to trust the process. Then. But, I mean, it's true, though. You know, like whenever you've kind of went through some of the stuff that I've been through and, uh, and you know, it's easy to like if I didn't if I didn't want to be doing this and didn't want to win a championship and win races, like I could have quit a couple years ago you know or or whenever or I could just you know go and ride for you know whatever team that doesn't have that much pressure on me and just go and have fun out there but you know I still want to be battling for wins and championships and prove that I can do it I think uh you know I've been I've seen a lot of stuff about how I can't do it so I like to try and prove people wrong <laughs> I, I think I would sign up for the fun team that done no pressure that's what that's the one I would sign <laughs> <Yeah>. up for <laughs> well, well. yeah it, I mean there can definitely be some pressure so it's it's yeah. tough and uh you know it's uh I mean every team that I've been on it's like you know you're there for one reason and that's to win races and to try and win a championship so yeah uh, yeah I mean it gets hard whenever you're just you know but also it makes it a lot easier whenever you've been healthy, you're putting in the work. Like, I mean, I work really hard and, um, you know, the whole team works hard for me and, and with me. And, uh, you know, you, you can kind of trust in, in that stuff that, you know, whenever you do show up to the race, like as long as you do your job and everyone does their job, like everything's going to go, go good, you know? So, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at and just trying to keep, uh, you know, working on things. I mean, you just, it's like every year the level just seems to go up. You got kids coming in that are just, you know, have watched everyone, you know, that like over the years and everyone just keeps getting better and better. And, you know, and it's, uh, you got to keep adapting to those new things and trying to do the, the things that you can do be- better, uh, just keep doing those. And, uh, you know, I think like for me, one of the, one of my strengths is, is the whoops. And unfortunately we haven't had very many great whoop sections this year. So, uh, I think that that's kind of, uh, or not that it's hindered me, but it's been kind of a bummer. Like I feel like that's where I can try to uh, to gain an advantage sometimes, and I think that that's kind of been taken away this year at a lot of races just because the whoops have been kind of smaller and and turn into jumpers most yeah. of the time. So and there's only nine I kind of, of them. struggle. Yeah, there's only nine, so it's an easy just three, 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 right? Yep. But I'm I actually struggle jumping whoops. I actually didn't jump whoops. Uh, maybe not one time last year. Actually, I don't think I did at all last year, even in practice. Um, my first day on, <laughs> actually, my first day on the star bike on Supercross. So I had rode like, I rode outdoors with them in 21, uh, no, sorry, 22. Mm-hmm. Um, I rode outdoors after Supercross. I trained all summer with the whole team, but I didn't do any races. And then uh, uh, our first day on Supercross, uh, we went to jumps a set of whoops and I crashed doing it and hurt my shoulder. And, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm a skimmer. Like I'm going to just skim the whoops. So, but I, you know, th- there was a couple of times last year at the races where I felt like maybe I would have been a little bit better off jumping them. And, uh, so I tried to work on that this off season and I've actually improved quite a bit at it. So, uh, yeah, just try to keep, you know, learning new things and doing stuff and, uh, keep plugging away at it. Yeah. You know, eventually it'll, uh, I mean, it'll either work or it won't, you know? So, uh, yeah, just keep trying to do everything I can to make it work. Yeah. We, Hey Jordan, we had somebody on the chat mention, uh, hashtag need more whoops. And I think I'm going to start a protest group for the whoops since they can't speak for themselves. And, <laughs> and then I'll go and I'll say they're here. You'll have fear. Get used to it. Most <laughs> of the riders want more than nine. I'll, I'll be right there. I'll be <laughs> yeah. on the front line of that yeah. protest group. 
Uh, just a couple more things before we let you go. Uh, yeah. I believe your first year pro was 2015. So you, you're a vet of the pro series at this point. You're working with some guys like Gavin Towers, or you're on the same team as guys like Gavin Towers and Hayden Deegan, some of these young kids coming in. And Do you, do you do any of them ever, you sit down and talk to them and kind of give them advice that those conversations happen just about anything within the career? And I mean, do they even realize like how close you came to winning a couple championships early on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, they realize we, I, I do talk to Gavin a good bit, um, about stuff and, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes they'll reach out and kind of, you know, ask me and, and Gavin, uh, you know, was, like I said, I, my strength is the whoops mm-hmm. and Gavin had kind of reached out to kind of ask some questions about that a little bit this year and stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm always here to try and help them out if they want to reach out and stuff and, and if I see something that, that they're doing, I'll try and help out as well a little bit. And, and you know, I think that uh, that's kind of, you know, not necessarily an unspoken, like, role of mine. But I feel like, you know, the the team's got me around. I'm a veteran, and, and I do know a lot of stuff. So I think that that's some, a place that I can kind of add value to the team, and, and I will when, and whenever I see something. So, yeah. All right. Uh, last one I have for you. We, we've been discussing – what happened with the Red Cross flag in the 450 class race two. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the footage. You've probably been in situations where there's flag issues. What, as a racer, what would you like to see? What do you think an answer might be to that? Like, obviously I feel, I feel like the red, the position of the flag was the biggest issue. They need to probably put it before the turn in that type yep. of situation. But uh, do you yep. have any thoughts on that? We, we, Scotty here brought up, you know, in helmet communication. That's been a discussion over the years. I don't think most riders like that idea, but what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, so I actually, obviously, I had a bit of an issue with the lights earlier this year with uh, Levi and I and oh, yeah, yeah. Glendale. So, um, you know, I actually talked to uh, to Mike Pelletier about that. Um, uh, you know, I was just kind of voicing my opinion on that aspect of it. Like, it's the lights are hard to see as they are, right? Like, you know, you come out of a turn, anything on the face of a jump out of a 180 turn, it's really, really hard to see because especially if it's on your inside, because, Mm -hmm. you know, you're usually fading more to the outside. You're not always like, you know, even whenever they're waving the white and checkered flag, like sometimes it's hard to even see that, you know, and you just kind of know that that's what it is uh, based off of your pit board and stuff like that. So um, it's hard to see. And uh, I, I kind of voiced an opinion on, you know, the rhythm sections, you know, let's have only red lights. Like if they're yellow and like, it's not a danger to like jump the jumps. Like if we're still allowed to jump the jumps then just throw a flag out. But like, if, if it's bad enough that we need lights and we need, you know, to roll the jump, then throw the red, like it's hard enough to see the lights. So if you're going to have red and yellow lights, like just make them red, you know, that way, if you see lights, you know that they're red Mm. and yeah, you don't have to, you know, decipher it Um, but yeah and and so i guess what i learned there is that actually in a rhythm section i believe that lights are only yellow in the rhythm section so there's no red lights on there's only red lights on a supercross triple or a finish line uh well i guess that wouldn't be on the finish line so only on like the big faces like a supercross triple there's red lights i think is what i got out of that but Um, they did say, like he did say that they had experimented a little bit with putting lights on the entrance of the turn as well. And I had actually noticed that I want to say it was maybe at San Fran. I saw it, um, where there was lights entering the turn and that was a lot easier to see like, okay, like now you have two seconds to make a decision, right? Instead of a half a second (laughs) to see a flag, you're already committed to a jump. I mean, like I said, like it's, it's really hard to, to see that, especially if it's on the inside. I mean, you know, but the best guys in the 450 class, they obviously know that you can't jump on a red cross. And for how many, did, was there five of five. them that jumped on yeah, it or yeah. something? Five you and know, Jason obviously, did twice. Right. And so obviously it's tough to, like, obviously there's a reason that they jumped on it, you know, yeah. like you, they didn't see it. You know, if they saw it, they wouldn't have hit it. I can almost guarantee. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, especially on the finish line, if you're, ex- because wasn't, I didn't watch the race back, but yet, but wasn't it, um, 
like on the white flag or on the yep. checkered flag. Uh, white so flag like lap, and then, ar- yep, checkered was the second time, yeah. So, yeah, so you're already expecting a, a flag to be waving, <laughs> yeah. and it's somewhat the same color as the flag they're going to be waving, you know? So it's, I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. So, I mean, you know, at the, in the situation, I think you have to dock them for sure just because of it. But, yeah, I think that there's got to be a better way to kind of um, – to go about that and try to avoid that and and not only avoid a penalty but if the rider would have been down on the landing you know how many guys could have gotten hurt because of that maybe they would have been waving the flag more aggressively or been more on the jump but if that's the case then they need to be like that anyways yes. you know yes. so i don't know it definitely seems like there's a better way to go about it last question Oh yeah. Uh, so dark side kind of mentioned that earlier we were talking about this and I, I mentioned in helmet communication, uh, obviously it'd be from one single source from a safety official. And the, when the, the point I brought up earlier was, is, is if, if they were to, you know, what does a supercross track have nine, 10 lanes? If they were to say, that's, that's a big supercross track. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Well, I'm mean, total. Like if you think straightaways and All everything, right. eight lanes, let's say eight lanes. If they were to tell you, you know, there was something in lane seven, would it be like, if, would it be? Would that be a, too much of an ask for you to guys to remember like which which lane you're in? Yes. Uh, yes, I think that like numbering the lanes. Yes, because I think I just counted it up as you were asking that question this weekend. Technically, probably had like ten lanes uh, with like the back and forth across the start there. So um, yeah, I think that that would be tough. I don't, you know, I don't really know how you could go about. You know, I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter and stuff about having in-helmet communication from, you know, that stuff. Uh, I think that it's, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Um, (laughs) That's fair. Yeah, I'm just genuinely curious. Yeah, I I, I mean, I think that numbering the lanes would be tough. Uh, I think that would be a lot easier, like, you know, finish line, red cross on finish line, you know. Okay. Um, Or... You know, super. If there's only one supercross triple, like Red Cross on Stadium Triple or something, okay. Um, and then you have multiple rhythms. That kind of gets tough. Um, but uh, maybe you could you could just number like each rhythm instead of like each lane. So okay. you have like like the supercross triple. You have the finish line, and then like maybe rhythm one and rhythm two. Um, yeah, I, I don't mean, know. I think yeah. the easiest thing is they they just have. They need to be uh, more. Eventually, y'all, uh, the goggles would be like Iron Man, yeah, right? Just need like to a little be, screen on the yeah, top. We'll, of the we'll have an position. Apple Vision. Yeah. We'll have Apple Vision Pro, <laughs> yeah. and we'll just we'll have a red cross in the in the top corner of our yeah. Apple Vision Pro. Fifty years <laughs> from now, they, there won't be guys on the track. They'll be literally just. It's ro- yeah, yeah ro- what, what are those those goggles that I guess Apple Vision or whatever. Oh, they'll just uh, be racing from fucking like their, Oculus racing. Yeah, they'll yeah. just be racing from their <laughs> chairs. Hey, I would probably do good. I did good in golf on the Oculus. Yeah, exactly, so, golfer on the Oculus. Uh, we'll yeah, be, we'll All be right. Ricky Carmichael on the track. Yeah. Jordan, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate you coming on tonight on an off week. I know you got family and all that, so it's probably not your highlight of your week. But thanks, it means a lot to us. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you guys having me on. I'll talk to you later. Okay, talk. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. See ya. All right, bye. That's Jordan Smith. Um, yeah, had some good points. Yeah, very liked open it. and honest. And yeah. I liked it. Good stuff. Uh, let's get into the X-Brand Forum check-in. X-Brand is your choice for clear vision and a leader in motocross and off-road goggles. X-Brand is used by many of the top GNCC riders, including the 2023 XC1 champion Craig DeLong, the 2023 National Hare and Hound XC1 champion Dalton Shuri, 2023 AMA National Enduro champion Grant Baylor, Lyndon Snodgrass uses them, Motocross, Supercross, and Marine Cross riders like Kyle Chisholm, Freddie Noren, Henry Miller, Michael Hicks, Richard Taylor, Jerry Robin, and many more all trust X-Brand. Visit EKSBrand.com or go to your local dealership and ask for X-Brand distributed through WPS. Uh, you and I, TJ, we, we trust X-Brand. X-Brand got me into the Loretta Lynn's regional qualifier this weekend. That's the only reason I qualified. Had His goggles I, are so good. Had I not had X-Brand, I would not have made it through, even though... They're worth less than 12 riders. I bet I wouldn't have made it. Those goggles are so good. <laughs> pretty- I hate that they're so good. Why? Because, like, I have to pay for them. <laughs> I give you a discount, though. I know, and it's still expensive. Oh, you're an idiot. Even if they were free. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they were free, they're too expensive? I, I got to pay for tear-offs. I don't like paying for anything, but I do well, buy them. The new Lucids are amazing. So good. Check them out. X-Brand, 
eksbrand.com. And they're actually up. cheaper than. The yeah, other. they're they're at the lower end of the elite they're pr- so premier good. goggles for sure. You can hit me up if you want to DM me DarksideMX3 uh, on Instagram because I am a and get your chick rep. to slide in there and maybe get a better discount. Mm. Yeah, my chick can slide in there. Well, yeah, you got a chick now, so you can't say that publicly. But if anybody, I mean, if else. chicks want to slide in my DMs to get a discount on goggles, probably not going to get a discount because I don't want that money to come out of my pocket. Oh. So it doesn't really matter, even if they were doing that before I had a chick. Like, I, I sell the goggles to make some money, not to give stuff away for free. Well, no, That's I why I charge you I try, you still extra. Charge me. You just don't even realize it. I charge you more. My kid, okay. my kid gets it for free, and I pay for him. Yes, that and works. that's perfect. And then the other co-host here, Scotty, just doesn't want him. He doesn't He, he doesn't support hey, our sponsors. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a soul writer. Is that what it's keep it Yeah, where you yeah. just mix stuff up? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. You, you would hate it. Like, if, if you don't look at the brand names, my... my Kit looks good, but I'm definitely all over the map. Mm, I don't know about that. All right. X brand forum check in. This one was posted by, it looks like a, let's see if this is the first one. Yep. Nope. Let me go to page one. Sorry. Not prepared. Sporting Wood says it's that EK, my- EKS brand is going to be continuing its winning streak at Washougal Vintage Race. Oh, yeah. He's in them. I, I feel like I know he's got some from me. I, I might yeah. even owe him a pair, actually, still. Okay. This forum topic was actually posted by Michael Lindsay, but it's uh, Justin Barsha released a statement on St. Louis incident. Everybody knows what we're talking about. The The reason I posted this, did you guys watch Justin's video that he posted on yes. Instagram? It was weird. I know Scott is about to say no. He has no idea what I'm talking about. Wait, I was I was too busy messing with TJ. What was the first thing you said? Did you watch the, the video? No, no, no. What was the Justin what was the Barson's in? statement on the Jet Jet Lawrence situation? Did you see his yes. statement? Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna. I have a couple t- points that he said that I struggle with. He said in that video, "That's not my style." <laughs> um, and Jet knows it wasn't intentional. So I, I like Justin. But he definitely has a reputation of this being his style. He seems to be very unaware of that. No, I, 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 I think what he's saying is my style isn't to just go in there and clean somebody out for no reason, like to just. I would just, agree with that. Just a, just a. Okay. I think that's. Yeah, what he's he saying. doesn't need much of a reason, it but does. it's usually it's usually <laughs> but the he reason. He is known yeah. for taking people out, but not like that. Not like okay. t-boning right. somebody on the side. Like uh, if you break it down that he had a pinpoint, he, then maybe you're right. But as a whole. I he, feel like things like this, you, you're not that surprised that it happened. I am surprised that it happened because that was, but I, I think it was, I think it was both of their faults in a way. Like it was a racing incident. Like I don't, I, don't, I well, guess that's it's what one he said. And I felt like it, yeah. I disagreed. I but. think it was like one of those non at fault accidents. If the cops would have showed up to a wreck, they would have been <laughs> yeah. like, both of y'all are idiots. Yeah. Okay. When, when I, when I first started hearing the, like the, you know, it was like, oh, whose, whose fault is it? Jet cut down. I was like, yeah, I mean, he may have cut down a little bit, but then when I, I, I rewatched the race and like the main line on that was kind of what Barsha was doing. That's what JT and, said too. And he, I just, yeah, I yeah. saw it. I saw that that was kind of like he was trying to apex and also it hasn't gotten talked about too much. I've heard it a couple of times, but jet kind of fumbled coming out of that corner too. Like his, he, he kind of misplaced his foot on the peg and he kind of didn't come out of there as fast as he probably would have liked to. And then like next thing you know, Barsha's there and Barsha was trying to shut the door on freeze. So, yeah, it was. And Jet's line looked like he was going to rail yeah. the outside. I mean, and he didn't. Yeah. There's I, a lot going on. I, there I, he is. Barsha but, showed immediate remorse. So, you have to give him credit for that. I agree. Like, then, But his comment, like with Jet, even, like, he knew it was intentional. Did he know? And, I, and he said, well, we can move on. Like, I feel like he was speaking for Jet. I don't know. Do you know for sure that Jet wants to I mean, move they, on? they talked afterwards. Yeah, but we don't really know. What has, has Jet said anything? I haven't heard Jet say anything. I haven't heard a response out of him I, I would say that maybe when he was referring to it, it's not my style, is apologizing. <laughs> yeah. So it's not really my style. Usually he's like, what? It was just racing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, not my so, st- it's not my style so, to take it. I guess the real question is, did, did Barsha just genuinely feel bad and remorseful for the way it happened, or was he getting blown out on social media and, and he everything. He felt it remorseful immediately Instantly. on the track because he put yeah. his hand on I mean, he, yeah. he didn't even get back into the I race mean, right away. Point. Yeah, he didn't even get back into the race right away. Well, do you right think away. the apology came from just that genuine remorse or that he was no. getting blown no, out? No, because they, they um, said, hey, Ollie, the, probably... Ollie Stone, their team manager, said that like right afterwards, he said he came off track and was like, I almost didn't 
pulled off. I almost pulled off. Like he was really bo- bothered by it. And oh, that's good. And has so, he, yeah. he has done some egregious crap before. He <laughs> yeah. has not apologized or felt but, yeah, worse. Yeah, that's I true. still still feel I've said this before. He had already passed the apex of the corner before he started turning. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, he's going the wrong direction at that point. <laughs> when, and yeah, JT said on the Pulp Review show that, or the Racer X Review show, that that line wide. was being used. Yeah. But like, I just Tomac feel that's taking it. I, I, in my mind, that's a shitty line then. Like, if you're going the wrong direction on the track, once he passed the apex, you're going the wrong direction. You, you need to be turning already. Yeah, fair enough. I don't, I don't like that line. Like, if Jet hadn't been there, I, again, Scotty, I hadn't noticed at that point that other people had taken that line. When I watched the replay while we were watching it live, I was like, where was he going to turn anyway? Even if Jet <laughs> wasn't there, like, where are you going? So, you know, on um, like Super Mario Kart? No, I, I, I've, never, I, I've only played it once or twice. Okay, so they have, I'm like, with you. They, they have these. <laughs> anyways, C, uh, CBH said Barsha plus Freeze equals a blue turtle shell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, is that like when it makes you spin? No, no that's yeah, the one. It's like it goes to the it goes to the fastest person it and go, yeah. it just explodes. <laughs> it explodes. Oh jeez! <laughs> All right. Well, that is the X brand form check in. Uh, there's a lot of responses to this, and a lot of people are just laughing at the. It's not my style. Like everybody thinks that's hilarious. Uh, a lot of responses. Uh, MotoXPodShow at gmail.com. If you want to give us your thoughts and comments on that, we're going to go ahead and move into the Barnett Clutch Performance of the Week. And this is where Scotty's going to shine, but we only have like five minutes. So we may need to actually, I'm going to tell Chiz. We're gonna, I'm going to tell Chiz we're going to be a few minutes late. All right. Do you guys, first of all, have Barnett Clutch's Clutch Performances of the Week or the last two weeks? Anything stand out? It sounded like you were setting me up for something. I a failure just say, or I just, my topic is, is where you're going to shine. It's where you're going <laughs> to shine. Does, it, does either one of you have any? Any uh, recipients of this prestigious award? I mean, it'd have to be you for actually qualifying for Loretta's and and working very hard to be in the top 12 out of the seven races (laughs) you raced against. Top tw- you said top 12 out of seven people? Yeah. Well, they were taking 12, they and there were seven of us. Actually, <laughs> oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. I knew. I didn't know how many. I thought All they I took had, eight. I thought they took no, eight. No, well, in some areas, I think it's nine or whatever. It, yeah. it was 12 out there. <laughs> okay. Thank you for missed that. It, missed it by that much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you you don't have one? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna go with uh with with the chef. I think that that was just a dominating clutch performance. He, okay, he swept him, and every he had the other two contenders at any at any point in the night there to battle him, and he left them. So yeah, I'm gonna say he was clutch, and that was all right. That's my performance. Well, my pick for the Barnett clutches clutch performance of the week, and this is gonna be a quick arena cross discussion. Kyle Peters. Kyle Peters, five-time Arena Cross champion, was it was not necessarily an easy uh, win of a championship. Ryan Brees gave him a run for his money. I think, if I remember correctly, Kyle won five main events throughout the year, and Brees won eight. Brees had a couple like round three, and then the first Daytona round had a couple bad races that cost him some points. But KP kept it together. It, this was not an easy championship. Like for, of the five championships, this might be his most difficult one. I. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no I was going to say, it's just very I, clutch. I think the reason why is because the AMA Arena Cross is growing. Yeah. It's getting tougher. And I think the best thing. A lot thing, of good riders showing up. The best thing for him to do is to go to Supercross if he has an opportunity because he has, he's tied for the most wins. Nope. But it's going to be hard for anybody else to beat that record from him. And then, but next year, I think that, cla- that, that series, if it keeps growing, is going to get harder and harder and probably. Chances are he won't win again like that. You know what I mean? Like, well, it won't be easy, but would you, like if you're Kyle Peters, you sign, but you go back to Arena Cross next year and you can get six possibly and be the all-time winning, you know, most championships. Why not? Like, I mean, what are, I don't, who knows what his opportunities are in Supercross? He obviously he can get a ride. I would think he'd make more in Supercross. Probably, maybe. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I said go make yeah. money instead of trying to get that well, elusive yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he decides. Um, but going into the Vegas finals, he was up by eight points. And really, you know, all he had to do is kind of – he even let Ryan Brees go in the second rate main event mm-hmm. and just kind of hang back. And as long as he stayed close, like he had it locked up, which that's kind of, again, why, one of the reasons I say clutch performance because he just rode smart, was mature, 
and which he kind of did all season is just took the race as it came. Yeah. Didn't really get into any crazy stuff. Didn't get, um, didn't get overly excited. Didn't lose his mind. And it was just a really impressive performance, but also Ryan Brees, you know, originally wasn't going to race this whole season in arena cross. He was going to do, I think the first three and then come to Supercross, and he started doing really well and made a, made a series of it. And it was a lot of fun to watch this year and very impressive. I mean, I, I like Ryan Brees. I've been a fan of his for a long time. Uh, so it made the series really exciting to see those, those guys battle back and forth. And then you throw in guys like uh, Marshall Welton, who showed up at a few rounds. And it was just a really cool series. Um, what you, what your thoughts, Scotty, on the finals? I don't know how much of you got to watch, but uh, well, it, it, the, the series is really good this year. According to one expert analysis um, that they used, they oh, had a high yes. opinion on on the inside show that, that it was going to come down to the last round, and it did. So it's just the the... Glad that we had the expert opinion of that guy. And I think that there. expert said it like the, <laughs> the, like the second to last round is when he said that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was three left. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, really, it was a really hot take. Yeah. <laughs> so knowledgeable. <laughs> I, I think that series is really growing. I am actually probably more excited for seeing the 25 season of arena cross yeah. and its possibilities than I've ever been about any arena cross season because the way that they're promoting it is really good. And I hear more and more riders wanting to, to do that. Yeah. It's becoming finally like it used to be mm -hmm. a, a legit series. Uh, and, and a lot of legit riders are, are racing there. There's more opportunities for guys that, you know, maybe they don't have the opportunity to go race supercross, but they can go to the AMA arena cross series and there's good racing. There's I'm sure there's good money to be made. And yeah. obviously guys like Kyle Peters and Ryan Brees uh, have made a show of it. So I'm sure the fans are really loving it. It's, it's really an impressive series that's coming along. Uh, I'm excited that it's finally coming back. It's been back for a couple of years now and growing every year, but yeah, Kyle Peters very impressive with that fifth championship because when you look at the, the main event wins really the, the, the odds were more in Ryan's favor. If he hadn't had a couple issues like at Daytona and Madison, Wisconsin, where he got a um, seventh, he had two seventh actually back to back at round three and round four. Without those, he probably, probably Ryan Brees probably wins the championship because right. he rode really well. Um, but you say it, that, but maybe KP doesn't doesn't sit back when he when he, yeah. he did. Maybe he didn't do what you said your clutch performance. Maybe KP pushes the the envelope a little bit more to be able to be up there and be in the battle. Yeah, and I wonder how much, like, Kyle was on a 250 most of the series. Except for three it, rounds? Yeah, I think, I'm not sure exactly how many, two, but two or three Daytona, rounds. the first round of Daytona, I think it hurt him. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, hell, just think that that race alone, when we had Kyle on right after that, he almost didn't make the main event. Right. In the LCQ, I believe he was third, going into the last lap, and the guy in second made a mistake. The guy in first fell on the last lap, and Kyle makes it in yeah uh yeah re he was literally like a half a lap away from not making the main event at the first daytona round that throws this championship away right, right. There. that's it that, that was the championship uh th and honestly that was luck he got lucky he was very underpowered in that deep conditions and you know, really ruddy conditions and he just got lucky it was the the odds were in his favor yeah. and i've it, never it i've never been good i'll always take luck yeah, I'll take luck too. <laughs> well, and Cochran, but, and Cochran is running the 350. You know, maybe that, I mean, unfortunately, they don't have that bike, but I wonder what the rules are. Could Cro they? Crockett? Yeah, yeah, Crockett, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Anyways, um, what's it called? Can I wonder if they can run big bores, like 250s and stuff like that. If, if they can run any bike, like any 450. Run a, run a 700. Well, just run like a 300 uh, big bore and a 250. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be a fast bike. Or just get a 350. Well, AMA well, Arena Cross Series is really one. exciting. Again, congrats to Kyle Peters on five championships. We'll see if he, you know, I guess in a few months, we'll know if he decides to maybe do six a sixth attempt or come to Supercross. We'll he, know, but our next rider is on the line, so I want to get into uh, FXR is designed by racers for racers with industry-leading fit, finish, and performance. Progression is the name of the game with every new piece created. At FXR, we push our brand to the next level to provide you with the best products possible Used by Muckoff, FXR, Club of MX, Yamaha team, Mike Brown, Brock Tickle, Chris Kiefer, Benny Bloss, and many more. FXR has cut core motor routes. So visit FXRRacing.com or go to your local dealership to see the complete 2024 lineup. Tonight, FXR brings us from the Twisted T, Hep Suzuki team, Kyle Chisholm. What's up, Chiz? 
Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, not a lot, man. Excited to, to talk to you. I guess right off the bat, congrats on 200 main event starts. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, it's cool, obviously. Um, I wouldn't say it's not something I like set out, you know, when I was younger. Uh, so like, oh, I want to get the most, you know, a bunch of starts or something like that. Right, right. Obviously, something initially that you're like really thinking of. But um, and, and honestly, I wasn't even sure that I knew it was close. Um, around 200, yeah, I knew 200 was coming close, but I didn't realize it was that weekend. And then after or this past weekend, and after practice, you know, I, I triple crown. So fortunately, I made it. You know, top 18 out of practice, and uh, you know, so no LCQ, so I'm in the mains. And um, yeah, I had a, a text from a couple buddies, and you know, hey, congrats on 200. And I was like, oh shoot, that's this weekend. I knew it was close, like I said, but I wasn't like really keeping track, you know, for the most part. And uh, yeah, so I got a text and I saw. Um, they had posted on Twitter. I think Clinton Fowler, I think, was one that posted it, or somebody, one of those guys. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, that's that's cool. So yeah, like I said, it's not something that I was like, you know, set out to do by any means. It wasn't like a goal, um, but it is cool, you know. Just that when you think about it, to reflect on like, oh, that is a lot of a lot of Supercross main events to race in. Um, obviously, I've tried for more than that and haven't made the main, you know, some of the times. But um, it's cool. Uh, to, you know, that it happened, um, it's cool to be able to, to be able to say you raced in that many and have that much experience and, and, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, nothing I set out to do, but definitely a cool, cool thing to, to be able to say you, that you did. So, so getting in the way back machine, cause I was trying to think of it earlier. Who was in your like turning pro Loretta's graduating class? Uh, I pretty much grew up, um, with like, I guess the, the main two, there's other ones obviously, yeah. but, um, like. Davy Millsaps and Michael Etsy oh, were yeah. my two two main competitors. It, it was just a little weird, like not weird, but whatever you want to call it, um, because my birthday's in December, and oh, then yeah. da- I believe Davy's birthday is February, and Mike's was like May. So like you know, I was you know two months older than Davy and like six months older than Mike, something like that. But you know, AMA whether it's birthday stuff for the age group classes. Um, because they were after January 1st for right. Davey and Mike, e- every couple of years they would stay back and then I would have to move up to the older class and race with like older kids. So yeah, like, you know, in the 12 to 13 or 7 to 11 and the 12 to 13 classes, which is that's what they were when I was racing 80s. You know, when I was, I turned 12 in December. So then that January 1st, I'd have to race the 12 to 13 class where you might be racing at 14 year old kids, right. you know, depending on their birthday, or like Mike and Davey they didn't turn 12 until just after January. So then we wouldn't be in the same class that year. But Mm. other than, you know, a couple of years of that, uh, for the most part, it was, you know, Davey Millsap, which he was from Florida. So we raced each other at, you know, the local races, you know, a lot of the time, as well as the the big races, the nationals. But then obviously with Mike, um, obviously he was the other, you know, winningest, you know, one of the winningest amateur guys, but we only really would see them at the big, you know, the national races and stuff like that. But yeah, those two guys were, or two of the main ones that people would know that, you know, I grew up with. So there's nobody else in that you really grew up racing with that's still out there doing it. Not really. Um, I mean, there are a couple, I mean, Phil, you know, Nicoletti, he's, he's, I think a few years younger than me. Right. So we didn't grow up racing each other, you know, as amateurs, but you know, we, you know, been around a long time. And then, uh, Josh Hill actually too. Um, I know he's just kind of racing here and there, you know, this Mm -hmm. year, you know, he missed quite a few years as well you know, racing back, you know, back a few years ago, but, um, Josh, I, like I said, I want to say he's a couple of years younger than me as well, but another one that I, I did grow, I did race some amateur races with, but not regularly. Yeah. Davey and Mike were my regular, you know, kind of competitors growing up. Chiz is the Barry Karsten of this generation. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Chiz, you know, you Poto came in after you and he's been retired for almost 10 years. Like it's, he hated racing. I, well, that's uh, yeah. not what a point. I, <laughs> I did just see like some. I don't know if it was on Twitter or somewhere. Yeah, somebody had posted, you know, because I think what his last year was 2014, and somebody had posted that like, yeah, it's been a decade since Bill Photo raced professionally. And I'm like, holy crap, that that really makes me feel kind of old. <laughs> cause, um, she make yeah, you feel Ryan, proud. Yeah, 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 both maybe or whatever. But uh, yeah, uh, Ryan was always I think a year or two younger than than me. So again, like there was like maybe a year in super minis where we raced each other. You know, he was a little bit younger, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, so we'd race each other here and there, but yeah, he was another one. And yeah, when you 
somebody posted that, I'm like, holy crap, that's 10 years that you know, since he raced professionally and I'm still still doing that. Sometimes yeah. I wonder what, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> I think but, I said, uh, yeah, it's, I think yeah. I said this last time I had you on, like I, I go to the vault and look at your results and there's a lot of pages to scroll down. When you're scrolling, there are a lot it, of races. It is, especially when you do the combined, you know, motocross and supercross. Yeah. And it's a lot, it's a lot to look through. I'll, I'll, I'll go back through there and look sometimes too. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. It's, and like I said, when you think about it, I, again, one of the stat guys, posted it so i apologize I, I i like all of them to follow all of them but can't remember which one posted it but uh gosh i want to say like combined rate just professional ama races it was like 300 and something i think you know with outdoors and everything yeah um you know, as of like beginning of the year and you know that's not counting like you know i had some years where i went racing canada you know for the outdoors and stuff like that so yeah it's just professional races um alone is you know when you count in outdoors and like racing in other countries and Canada and stuff. It's, it's a lot. It's getting up there, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been a, a fun ride. It's, and it's gone by quick. That's what the crazy thing is. You know, like we talked about, uh, RV, you know, haven't, hasn't raced almost in 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how fast the time goes. Oh. It's, it's, yeah, it's not. You're not lying. And what's cool though, to me at least is you still have the passion to go do it. Like you clearly still love to do it. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's a job still like obviously I make a living doing it and and you know I've never by any means made enough money in my career to just retire you know you know for the most part obviously I've done done okay you know whatever but I it, it is a job but it's also a job that I still love to do right so it's like okay so if I retire from racing like you know I have to get a job doing something and I love the sport and you know would love to still be involved in the sport and do something with that but at the but at the moment I feel like, well, it is a job. I'm still making a living doing it and I'm still doing pretty good at it and I still enjoy doing it. You know what I mean? I, you know, we talked before and yeah. those are kind of always my three criteria to, you know, with that I look at if I want to keep doing it. So it's like, it, yeah, I make money. It, it is my job, but I still love to do it and I'm still doing pretty, you know, pretty good for the most part at it. So it's like, why, why not do it? You know, as long as I, all those things kind of line up. So, yeah. In your mind, how many more, you know, we're at, a, we're at 200 career main event starts. How many can you get to? Do you, do you I mean, well, that's what about I was going to say. So I did some math, Chiz. Okay. You have, you got, you have to do uh, 3.88 more years <laughs> at, yeah. and you're making every main. And then you, you break, you'll be at two, you'll be at a uh, 160 or, or 266. Yeah. Jeez. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'll be honest. <laughs> hey, four years, but, man, you got it. <laughs> but that, see, I say that and then the time goes by so quick and who knows in four years, we might be sitting here talking about this. I think the hardest part of that would be making every main event, you know, it gets harder and harder every year and more and more guys, but um, hey, there'll be a handful of them that, that dip out in the next couple of years. It, it is. And then there'll be some that move up and you know, the cycle I've been through a lot of cycles, you know, as we can, <laughs> as you know, as we've been talking here. So yeah, um, yeah, I know. I definitely know how that, how that plays out and kind of how it works. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like, like I said, I, I, it, it maybe it would happen. Maybe it won't, you know, whatever. I kind of just kind of take it as it goes and, and kind of decide, you know, I, we're, we're almost through the Supercross season, which is already crazy to say, yeah. we have like five more, which is nuts. Like I said, it goes so fast, but we still have a lot of racing, you know, the rest of the year too. And um, yeah, I think, uh, just as we get a little closer, you know, further down through the year, I'll kind of do my evaluation and say, okay, do I want to want to keep doing it? And, and to be honest, you know, just depending on how things go the next few years, whatever, and what opportunities come up or don't come up or whatever, um, I could also see myself, you know, and, and I like I'm just speaking off the top of my head, but you know, I could see myself, you know, racing a few races here and there, you know, say a few years from now, maybe mm -hmm. it's not the full season or just Supercross or whatever. You know, you know, you never know what, what could happen. So, yeah, we'll do our best this year and then kind of as we wind it down, start kind of evaluating and trying to figure out the plan for, for next year and, and beyond that. So, yeah, yeah. No, nothing set in stone one way or the other. How much are you still testing? Like last year we talked about this quite a bit where you were doing a lot of testing and helping Kenny get the, you know, the, get the bike prepared for Kenny. Is that still a, yeah. a big part of what you're doing day to day or week to week? Um, not a ton right now. Um, yeah. In the off season, we made uh, some chassis changes on the bike, which were all better. Um, everybody liked better and was good. So I spent a bit of time in the off season. The, the small, I should say, the small off season that we got. Yeah, right. Doing work, 
across the playoffs. We only had like four weeks of actual off season because we raced all the way up until Thanksgiving, you know, in Australia. So we only had about four weeks before we were back at Anaheim again. Um, but in that four weeks, I spent some time in California doing some testing just with me and Larry and, and the team. And then uh, they, had, after I was done a week of about a week or so of doing that, we then took everything and brought it to Florida and the team came down there like the second week of December and kind of went through that with the rest of the guys just to kind of confirm the stuff that I had tested. And uh, yeah, everything was better. We liked it better. So we did, did some more, I don't know if I'd say major, but more, the bigger changes uh, through the off season, some testing stuff that I did. And then from there, as far as like Kenny stuff goes, he's been pumped on like suspension setting. It's really, he's made a few little, you know, one shim here or there, um, just kind of fidgeting back and forth on some settings, but nothing crazy. Um, so with him, it's been really easy. Like I said, we did the, the main stuff in the off season and that's what he kind of switched to. And then as far as the other settings, you know, engine and suspension, he really hasn't changed anything. He's been pretty happy, you know, since last year. And as a racer, I know you don't want to change stuff if you're comfortable and happy. So there's been, you know, nothing really to 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 do as far as that stuff goes uh, with Kenny. Other than, you know, I try to give him my advice. He might be saying, hey, I think my bike's doing this. And we talk about, you know, whether it's clickers or even uh, a shim here, a shim there or with Matt, you know, testing. Mm-hmm. Kind of just kind of give him my two cents when he's kind of stuck or trying to figure something out. I'll hop on his bike sometimes and ride it, but nothing major. You know, he's been pumped with the bike since last year, since we got it kind of dialed. And you know, like I said, we've made a few changes at the beginning, of the, but the off season before the season started. And yeah, he's been, been pretty happy with it. And obviously he's had a pretty good season for the most part. You know, he already got a race win and he's been doing pretty good and happy. So that's made it easier for me. And, uh, and I've been kind of focused on, you know, I'm on KYB suspension this year for Supercross. So been kind of spending a lot of my time kind of developing that and actually helping Shane, a little more because he's also on the KYB stuff. And I'm sure you've noticed, but Shane's been having a, a even better year than he did last year and uh, had, a, had a really good race this past weekend. So been trying to help Shane a little bit um, as we've been on KYB together. And um, yeah, so I've been trying to kind of help, help wherever I can, you know, and uh, yeah, I think the team's in a really good place. So there's not, not a ton to do at this point in the season other than, you know, trying to help when I can. Yeah, Shane has definitely stepped up. It's been really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. He's been riding really well during the week at home. Uh, the last few weeks, he, we kind of, I would say about a month ago, I made, I was kind of set on my, not set, but like, okay, let's just ride it out and give it a few races and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying, if not, there's something missing. We need to make it better. So we kind of figured some stuff out and I thought it was better. And then introduced that to Shane. And then of course, you know, he takes kind of my base, like, okay, here, this is like a, the, the way to set it up. But then, he, he might, he runs like a half a spring rate stiffer than me. And then, um, which is obviously just kind of more geared towards your weight, um, and, and preference a little bit. So he runs a little bit stiffer spring, a half rate stiffer spring on the rear. And he's a, a few shims stiffer, you know, but for the most part, like the actual setting, you know, is pretty much the same or very similar to what I run. So yeah, a few, about a month ago, I kind of, uh, me and Matt, you know, our suspension guy tested and I was like, man, I think, okay, that's better. So then Shane kind of tried that and then put his own little, you know, finishing touches to, to what he wanted um, with it. And he's been much better with the bike since and been riding really good during the week and getting a little better each weekend. I think he would have got a seventh in the last uh, triple crown moto this past weekend and a top 10 overall. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he's been, he's been riding really good the last, you know, I'd say month or so. Um, and yeah, trying to, yeah, that's not just trying to keep the, the whole team uh, getting better and better. For sure. Uh, Couch is brought to you by FXR tonight. Yeah, Chase, it's cool to see y'all as a team. Y'all have been real solid this year. It's like I, I was watching one of the, you know, during one of the mains this week, I I was like, there's there's Chisholm just rocking like 12th, 13th place, just just cruising along, doing his thing. And it's cool to see that team have the success that you guys are having. Um, unfortunately, there was an issue with, with Kenny this weekend, either a bike issue, and he had – he had kind of a fire drill a little bit to get ready for the next race. Um, how I know he's not in the same exact tent as y'all. He's kind of next door, but was there as the team, was there any kind of panic or how did y'all handle that situation as a, as a whole? Yeah, this weekend uh, overall was pretty good. You know, I, like you said, the one moto, I think Kenny got like a fifth, the last moto, Shane was seventh and I was 12th or something like that. 
So yeah, to have all three of us, you know, almost in the top 10, I was the only one <laughs> not in there, but we we're close. And, uh, no, it, it was, it was good. Kenny had a rough weekend though. Um, not really his fault, you know, by any means, but, um, so that was kind of a bummer, you know, just overall for, for him, but it's racing, man, stuff happens. And, uh, yeah, that first moto, he had a pretty decent start and he, I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but Jet was, didn't jump like that last double or came up short and Kenny landed right in the back of him. And, um, to my knowledge, um, and I saw his bike, you know, after the night was over, but, uh, yeah, it, it pretty much ruined his, uh, left radiator when he hit the back of Jet there in that second turn. Um, he missed the pile up. Fortunately, he didn't go down, but his radiator just got smashed. I think in the back of Jet's pipe or something like that. So he lost all the coolant in his bike, and uh, he almost made it. And I believe the bike just got really hot and ended up uh, popping one of the hoses off as well, or one of the hoses came loose or something like that. When when it leaked out out of the radiator, and then it blew a hose off as well. And yeah, he he was able to finish, but he had to limp the bike home. And obviously, he should have ended up I think like third or maybe fourth that moto. Um, but man, he tried to salvage the bike. It, it was just got really hot, obviously from losing all the coolant, which is, man, just an unfortunate thing that happened and just definitely a bummer. But, uh, fortunately now, you know, they made the rule where, where you can pack two bikes for triple crowns. So they had a backup bike ready, you know, for him to go with that was, you know, the same bike. It's obviously different. Um, but settings and engine and everything's the same. It's ready to go for him. So there wasn't too much panic. They weren't trying to swap motors or do anything crazy. They just, you know, got the other bike, checked it over. You know, it was pretty much ready to go, but, you know, just made sure it was good. And uh, and he raced his other bike, I think, for the second two races. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, no panic. Team did a great job. Obviously, they were prepared. That's, that's why we were able to do that now with the Triple Crown. And uh, it obviously worked out, you know, having both bikes ready to go. Um, but I know as a racer, and I actually didn't even really talk to Kenny about this, so I don't even know if this was a thing. But I know as a racer, you can set two bikes up the exact same, and they still feel a little different, right? Like our practice bike is set up the same as the race bike, but it still just feels a little different sometimes. So I'm sure it was tough, you know, still hopping on another bike. And, you know, the second moto, we don't get a parade lap. You know, we don't get a hot lap. Right. So he pretty much had to just go up cold turkey and just race the bike. So I'm sure it took a few laps to kind of adjust and, um, you know, work through that, you know, and stuff like that. So definitely, like I said, just a bummer night for him. Uh, I think he stoned up what the top five, that last moto, but I know he wanted more and was definitely bummed, but it's racing. Like I said, he was lucky not to be in that pile up, but, uh, yeah, the bike definitely took the, the brunt of it. And yeah, just unfortunate. Yeah. I, I, you may not even know this if you didn't actually talk to Ken and, but it, it sounds like the, the backup bike actually wasn't completely like they didn't touch it. And supposedly his levers weren't really where he wanted them. That's kind of what oh, okay. I'd heard. So, yeah, I think that's why he struggled, you know, trying to, that second one. You know, obviously, the first one, the bike was, you know, blowing steam. The second moto, he got 13th. And I think, from what I heard, he wasn't actually comfortable on it. Uh, it just wasn't – they didn't touch it all day. Yeah, and I'm sure that, like I said, that's why like I said, I, I talked to him, but not about that. Yeah. He was he was really bummed that, you know, we're, he, it's not – you know, he doesn't go there to get, you know, <laughs> top five or 15th or 13th or whatever. Sure. You know, obviously, bummed. Um, so I didn't, I, I talked to him today even, but not about that. You know, it, it, I know as a racer, it's like, you know, sometimes you want to just be left alone and have your own <laughs> thoughts on it. Yeah. I'm sure we'll talk, we're going to ride tomorrow. I'm sure we'll talk about it a little more tomorrow. I didn't want to come off the track and be like, Hey man, you know what happened? <laughs> you know, you're like, I'm not to talk to anybody right now. Sure. So I, I know I have as a racer. So yeah, I didn't actually talk to him about that, but I could see, like I said, it's hard. Even when a bike, you think you all sit on my bike and set the levers. I'm like, yeah, I think that's pretty good. And then you go ride it. And you're like, oh, actually, they're a little too low or they're a little too high. I need to adjust them a little bit. You know, and that that happens. You know, you get used to one thing, and it's hard to make something the exact same. And, you know, and, and yeah, maybe that's something. If, if that happens, you know, I'm sure the team will learn from it, and uh, nobody's perfect. And yep. we'll try to have the other one even more ready, you know, than, than you think. Maybe ride it on press day or something, you know, at, at a triple crown or something like that would be something that we could do and yeah, just be better, more prepared for next time. Right. Got it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cool you know, or interesting to think about when, you know, you can have a bike set up the same, It's but it's like if you ordered a, you know, a pepperoni cheese pizza the same night from the same restaurant every night, it wouldn't be the exact, I mean, it'd be close, but it wouldn't be the exact yeah. same. So like I, I never it's a good comparison. Scott. Yeah. You like that? It's <laughs> very, yeah. very similar. It's. I yeah. mean, it, it makes a, it makes a good point. I mean, the, he. I like where Chiz was going with that. 
But uh, yeah. any, his point was good. You're sucked. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm not good, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm that, hungry that, now. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> want a big old grease. Yeah, when, when at the end of the year you can do a big old greasy cheese pe- or pepperoni cheese pizza cheese. Yep, yep. yep we'll do it. it. I'm have another question. Okay, go, go ahead. Uh, the um, oh wow, now I'm drawing a blank because I got. Did you lose it? No, I, I got you? it now. Um, so hey, the the twisted T Suzuki graphics I think have been one of my favorite you know, set up kits, however you want to call it that, that I've seen yep. in a while. Oh, oh, you know, we've talked about your lustrous long career. How, uh, what has been your favorite ultimate setup that you've rode, uh, had on, on your bike? And it doesn't have to be like how the bike felt just, just looks wise. Looks wise as far as like on the, twi- on the bike right now, or just overall, the just, just your, yeah, your favorite, bike. your favorite, uh, setup that you've ever had looks wise, oh, man, that's hard. I'm trying to like think and picture it. And so many, um, selfishly, I'd probably have to pick like one of the years I did my own thing. Yeah. You know, they're probably really that cool, but team you know, Chiz KX, look, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like I like my bike quite a few times in 2015 when I did my own, my team Chiz. Uh, like I think that's probably the first time I really did it in 2015. Yeah. Um, Owie, I had some cool bikes. I felt like that year, my Yamaha one had, you know, Ricky Fowler in his face on the side of my graphics. Um, those are some fun ones too. And yeah, I guess selfishly, I'd probably pick any of those years that doing it on my own and kind of putting all of it together. And, you know, um, that's the fun part of it. But man, as far as like just looks go, dude, it is hard to like what you just said that the, the Suzuki's do look good. They, they're good looking bikes when they're all done and the yellow, the yellow rims and or gold, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, yeah, our, I think our bikes do look really good. I, I really enjoyed actually our world supercross bikes this year. Um, mm-hmm. I thought the plastic and the graphic scheme looked really good. Um, yeah, I think the Suzuki's Dustin does a good job, uh, with, with doing our graphics. Obviously SKDA does all of our stuff and they do a great job. Um, they did my stuff on my Yamaha the last couple of years as well. And, uh, yeah, they've always done a, always done a really good job. Nice. got a couple more questions for you. Um, with as long as you've been in, in this, uh, we always talk about your age, which kind of probably gets old to you, but, um, you know, this year you haven't made every main event, you know, so I, I wonder how you, how you react when you don't make a main event compared to say five years ago, does it bother you as much? Is it worse? What's your reaction? We, you know, I think Arlington, maybe you didn't make it. Um, yeah. What is your reaction when you don't make a main now? Honestly, it's probably the same. Okay. I would say. Uh, I'm pissed. Yeah. I'm mad. Um, I, I know like only because it's, I, I know that's where I should be, right? I should be in the main event. Um, now I'll still be mad, but if I just go out there and just ride my absolute best and just give it, I always give it my all. But if I'm like, if I give it my all and it was just the best I could ride and I come off the track, like, dude, that was as fast as I could go. I did everything right that I could do and I'm just too slow or I just, it just, I wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a little, honestly, easier to swallow than like when you know you should be in there and stuff happens or you make a mistake. I'm kind of more mad at myself. It's still nice. to like, okay, well, I know I'm still good enough to do it, but I just made this mistake. So fix the mistake. But it's like, well, you shouldn't have made that mistake because usually it's (laughs) something I, at this point, I should know not to do. Right. Yeah. But perfect. You know, look at that. It's, you know, it, it, it happens. It's racing. And no matter how long you do it or whatever, it's stuff, you're never going to be perfect, right? You can't prevent every mistake or do, you know, prevent everything and be perfect. So, um, yeah, man, I, I would say I'm, I'm just as mad as I was, um, 10 years ago or 20 sure. years ago, whatever, not maybe for different reasons. There were definitely years earlier in my career when like, if I didn't make the main or didn't perform, I felt like, Oh crap. Like this is my job. Like I got to pay my bills and, I'm trying to do this for a living and what am I going to do for a job? <laughs> if I don't do good. Like I don't want to get a real job. Like I want to race dirt bikes. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, of like, course. A little different, like pressure feeling back then. Like I got to perform cause I need a job. Right. Where like now it obviously I still feel like I still feel that like I still need to go do good or, you know, do my job in order to have, you know, ha- add value to the team or to a team and for results for myself. If I want to keep racing professionally, Right. Like I can't suck. I got to do good. Whatever good is, whatever measurement that is on my own personal scale, like I need to do good. Right. So 
yeah, for me, I know I should be in the main event. I know I should be at least, you know, in the top 15 or, you know, that it's up in that area. And yeah, if I don't do that, I'm mad. You know, I, I still, I still work hard during the week. I, if anything, I got to keep working harder and harder, right? Like the older I get, the harder it is, the younger my competition is and the faster they get every year. So I got to work harder now than I did when I was 26, you know, sure, 30. Yeah. Six. Good point. I, than I was then, you know, if I want to keep doing this. So, you know, usually guys in their career, as they get older, they get slower and slower and worse and worse and results get worse and worse. And yeah, I'm not quite as good as I was back in my prime, whatever you want to call it. You know, I, I was a top 10 guy, you know, every week. And if I wasn't, it was bad where, you know, maybe now I'm a top 15 or 18, you know, whatever main event guy, it's not quite as good, but it's, my drop off hasn't been that far, right? It's not like I won championships and then now I don't make the main events. You know, I'm still ballpark, you know, where I, where I was 10 years ago, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, I think I've got to be better now than I was 10 years ago in order to still be where I am, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, I get, yeah, long, long story short, I get pissed if I don't make the main cause I know that's where I should be and where I work to be. So, uh, yeah, if I go out there and just give it my all though, and it's just not good enough, that's when I got to look at myself in the mirror and be like, okay, you got to just figure something out, right? Go back to the drawing board. You got to yeah. be better. Where can you be better? And then work on it and, and be better. And then I'm sure there's going to be a day when it's like, dude, I don't have any more in me. I, that's as good as I can do. And I, I'm not getting any better and I'm not making the mains or I'm not, you know, doing good anymore. So, you know, father time is always going to win. So, uh, yeah, but until then, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm good enough to be there where I should be. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pissed when I don't make it. Okay. It's, it's, it's different. I, it's, it's, you know, I, I can learn from it and be better. But, yeah, I'm still, still pretty pretty angry with myself if I don't perform. I like that. We got two more for you, and we'll let you go. Yeah, it's just yeah. Kind, of, kind of similar on that same topic. Oh, who have you found that you've battled the most this year? Who, who do you just keep running into? Um, Man, I would, I, I'm trying to think. I'd have to look at results even to see, yeah. like, there's and if it's Vince, so many- you literally run into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of guys. A lot of times about this, this year. Um, man, it's hard. There's been that we've said this all year, and I know we're missing a couple guys right now, but the field has been pretty deep all year, and there's been mostly everybody healthy, you know, for the most part all year. And and I mean, not the guys that they show on TV. I'm talking about the guys that are from like 15th to, to 28th. You know what I mean? Like in lap times and stuff. There's still five or six guys that don't make the main each week that are still pretty dang good riders mm-hmm. that maybe one week they make the main and then the next week they don't make the main. So you're not always, for most years, guys, you kind of settle in and it's like, okay, I always battle in that 13th to 16th range with these three or four other guys, right? You're kind of always in that group where this year, it seems like there's just so many guys in each kind of group that it's always somebody kind of different. But, man, I'm trying to think, I don't know if you guys know, I'm trying to think who I've been. Well, I know, like, K, I, I know, Kay, you're like Kay's like Achilles heel. Like, Kate always tries it, to. Kate, me and Kate had a battle one of the motos this week. I think I remember one other race that we did a little bit. Um, but I feel like there's a few guys that have been, that I've been kind of like that with. Yeah, because Kate's yeah, struggled some this year. Deep. Yeah, it's, it's hard. And I wouldn't even, like, like that even right there. I don't even know that he struggled. I think he's riding probably better than he ever has there's just so many guys that are in that ballpark of mm-hmm. speed and, you know, capability right now. So it's mm-hmm. tough. Like he could be, Cade could get 15th one weekend and then not make the main. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, exactly. It's tough all the way through, yeah. you know, not just the top 10 guys. It's the next group of guys that are that 15 to 25 range. It's tough all the way through there, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah I feel like, I guess the races that Vince Freeze has been at, I've kind of, been around him a little bit sometimes i feel like this weekend we were together a few races and oldenburg um at some of the ones that they've been at uh yeah, yeah. Man, I, I kind, of, it's, kind it's, of an insert rider name here situation <laughs> yeah yeah all right last one this is a vital mx forum member question from the uh, from our vital mx forum obviously uh son of thor 32 said can you tell us about your mental warm-up you do on the gate after the bikes are fired up obviously they uh, it got shown on tv a couple weeks ago i even asked you about this on my question of the week a few like a month ago i asked you what your uh, pre-race ritual was and you talked about it but uh yeah walk us through your your pre-race ritual getting yourself pumped up for a race 
Yeah, honestly, I haven't even watched the races the last like two weeks. So, uh, long story short, Brittany uh, was in Texas, so I had the I had the kids to myself all week <laughs> last week trying to a couple days of practice in. So I've had like zero zero free time between the kids and school and dance and our baby, our one year old. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm always trying to be stay loose and fire myself up and and fidget with stuff and goggles and and just kind of like get myself amped up. I always I like war- get my hands warm. I hate, I'm so used to sweating at home um, in Florida all the time. And I, especially when it's cold, you go to the cold races. So I'm always trying to warm my hands up like I'm like, oh, so I'll try to get them hot, almost get them sweaty. I'll, um, and then the other thing, I think I've told you this before, I'm always trying to smack my hands together. Yeah. I don't know if I'm like getting old, I need like carpal tunnel surgery or something, <laughs> but it's up and getting them like loose and not like tight and stiff. And like I said, especially when it's cold. So I'm always trying to get them, get them warm and, uh, I'll clap, hit them together, and you know, trying to trying to get my hands loose and, and warmed up. But man, honestly, always I'm. You can't hear me. The other guys probably can't hear me because I can't yell very. I can't yell very loud. But I'm usually yelling, trying to fire myself up and just uh, get myself going because it's hard sometimes doing it so much, and it's kind of, you know, it's like okay, another race, whatever. But you really I like trying to get yourself in the zone, and and obviously, and I get nervous too, right? Like everybody does, and you know, it it. You know, it. I think if you're not nervous and whatever, mm-hmm. you don't care enough, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I want to do good, and you work hard. I think if you don't put a lot into it, there's not much to be nervous about, right? Because if you're like, ah, if I do bad, who cares? You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, self, you know, self consciously. Why well, didn't work that hard? So if I don't yeah. do good, who cares? Because I didn't really work that hard, anyways, right? But when you work hard, you want to do good, and yeah, you're nervous and trying to fire yourself up, and yeah, it, I'm always jumping around and fidgeting around and, and trying to get myself going as well and, and get myself hyped up and, you know, Tony Robbins energy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Going. It's uh yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's like I said, it's a balance of trying to, trying to get yourself going and being nervous and, and wanting to do good and yeah, going out there and trying to perform. Good stuff. Cheers. Thanks for, uh, as always for coming on here and kind of keeping us up to date and tell us what you're thinking and what's going on. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Love, love getting on with you guys. Keep and, on chasing, dude. And photo talk. Yeah, well, hopefully enjoy your week. Hopefully you get some family time this weekend with a weekend off. And yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do a little little outdoor riding this week. Actually, change it up and okay, go back a little bit and try to open her up a little bit and just change it up. And then uh, yeah, have a nice weekend at home. No plans yet. Not sure what we're doing. We might might take get to the beach and spend the weekend there. Do. I like to go golfing or fishing, try to get something like that. Yeah, just be nice and just be home. Home with family, not have to travel anywhere, and that'll uh, that'll be nice. And then, man, but I'm already this week, I took a couple of days off, and I'm like, okay, it feels weird not to be preparing and ready to go. But, like, at this point in the season, you got to kind of force yourself to back it down a little bit and kind of refresh and recharge the batteries and, and all that. So, yeah, I'll ride a couple of days this week and, uh, yeah, have a good good weekend at home with the family and then uh, – yeah, before you know it, we'll be back at, at Foxborough. Yeah. Going it, again. It'll be here quick, man. Well, again, thanks for your time. It's always a pleasure. Yep. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. You too. See ya. All right. Kyle Chisholm brought to you by FXR tonight. Really always appreciate him jumping on. TJ had to bail. I guess he uh, he got he actually does have a job now. He's yeah, like a mobile mechanic. Mobile mechanic. He got called out, so he left, but that's okay. We will get into our, our troll training top five. Speaking of troll training, riders such as Grant Harlan, Jeremy Martin, Henry Miller, Jason Anderson all trust troll training. And troll training is the culmination of a combined three decades spent in the trenches of the professional sports scene, refining training methods, learning, absorbing, and training alongside some of the best in the business. Alex Martin and John Wesley have expert guidance in helping you navigate the many nuances of training, including periodization, endurance, strength, and conditioning, riding technique, on the bike structure, nutrition, and more. Visit trolltraining.com. There's a multiple multiple packages and options you can look into if you want to get yourself in shape, especially if you're a little bit older guy like myself, getting on up there in the ages there, Scotty. Mm. You need I needed somebody to kind of show me what to do and and keep track of what I'm doing and it's just that's what I needed. So I really like the app that they use uh, every morning. I look at my calendar, I know what workout I got to do, I go do it. I had two workouts today actually. It's been making me feel a lot better than I have in years. Mm. So thanks to trolltraining.com. Uh, The Troll Training Top 5 this week was one presented by one of our listeners, Chris Woods. And it was basically like riders that have pissed you off in the past, but now you like. 
just so you guys know, next week is um, top five ways to relax. Like she just talked about that. Week off, mm. find a way to relax. MotoXPodShow at gmail.com where you can present. You can let us know what your top fives are. We'll read them on the air. Um, if I'm being honest, I really, really like this topic this week. The top five riders who or riders yeah, it's who, kind of a tough one. Who you, but I struggled coming up with answers because I yeah. didn't really have but one that I can really think of that I used to not like or made me mad or I bitched about that now I do like. Um, I actually ended up coming with up with three. One of them, unfortunately, I'll just go and get into mine. I was going to go with TJ because I thought it'd be funny, <laughs> but he left. Yeah, he was. Um, he, he, <laughs> yeah. And, and then I, I put Ryan Villapoto down, and Ryan never pissed me off. I just didn't like his attitude because he seemed so negative and short yeah. when he wasn't happy racing. And now that I know him, he's such a funny guy, so just friendly. So I kind of didn't like him that much at the end of his career. I don't know if he pissed me off, but I didn't really like the guy until I got to know him. Yeah. And my number one is absolutely Cooper Webb. When he was on 250s, man, I did not well, like him. One. I didn't like his attitude. I didn't like things he said. And I've told him this to his face. I said, dude, I didn't like you at all. And then I got to know him and I liked the grittiness. And I, and I kind of realized that a lot of that personality that we would see is really just to try to fuck with people. Mm-hmm. Um, that he's actually pretty funny. Again, a funny guy. He's you know, and, and, and his friends like Phil Nicoletti and, uh, you know, a bunch of those other guys, they, like they just totally destroy him all the time, making fun of him. And, and he's just, you know, he's a regular dude. So mm-hmm. I've come to really like Cooper. He's one of my favorite of the racers now. So that would be really the the main one is Cooper Webb. Unfortunately, I just couldn't come up with five. Yeah. Um, I, I think those are good ones. I, I'll, uh, I'll share Cooper Webb with you. That's, that's a good, not TJ. <laughs> no, that that was a good one. Um, I will also say uh, I was kind of like that with with Reed. I never really liked him. Okay, like back in like it, like when he first started his career. But as he as like his career just continued, continued, I I, get, I garnered a lot of respect for him. Mm-hmm. Um, just for the fact that he stayed relevant for that long. So I'll say him. Okay. Um, I'll say. Uh, oh, I just had a couple, and now that we started doing them, I. You thought yeah. of a couple and then forgot them again? Yeah, oh, exactly. Um, oh, man. I'm you, looking for Garrett Rockley sent some from like the old one last week, I think. I'm trying to find it. Oh, uh, Villeman. I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't like Villeman at first, oh. but he, he grew on me as, as a rider, okay. racer, team manager. Yeah. Um, I That's could not also, a bad one. Yeah, I could also think, I could really think of like the opposite way, like like riders I liked. And then and now you don't? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm trying to think of another one I'd, I'd throw in there. It's it's hard because I really like the riders I liked. I liked them like the whole time. Okay, yeah, there's not there really aren't that many that I've changed on. Oh, I, I would uh, say there might be more that I liked. I'll put the, I'll put Roxon in there. Really, you didn't like him in the early days? Yeah, because he was like he was the rookie coming and trying to beat Poto, and I was a big Poto mm. guy. Uh, so okay, so yeah, I'll say I'll say that. So and I could maybe go way back to like John Michelle Bale. Oh like, yeah, I didn't like him when he was racing. Nobody liked him, but then when you and, and I don't know him now, so I can't say I like him. But I have more respect for him now than I did then, right? Because I, I didn't like. I, now you realize how talented he was. Maybe at the time I just didn't want to give him any credit. Um, but yeah, Garrett Rockley sent in one. Uh, he said number five was Jeff Ward. He was a thorn in the side of my guys during the eighties, but racing Indy and Supermoto and still grinding. He's rad. I was actually a Jeff Ward fan. Uh, his number four is LaCobra, so he agrees with you. Wasn't a fan of him and his goofy riding style and has been a threat to win in the U.S. Now listening to him talk and his no, no, his no-nonsense approach to training is pretty cool. Uh, number three was Ricky Carmichael. Unreal racer, but couldn't stand him beating McGrath. I agreed with that 100%. I've come around watching him race NASCAR, own a team, and win championships in the booths and on podcasts, not to mention his career numbers. Yeah. Um, Ricky was a little different, though, because Ricky, like... Everybody liked him when he first came in because he was like this wild child, mm. kind of like just changing twisted. the game, yeah. twisting the throttle. Yeah, and then he kind of went to where he went to a little period where not all the people, everybody liked him, and then they he became the goat. So it's sure. like it's kind of it was, his was kind of a roller coaster almost. Okay, uh, he mentioned Fro Jeff Emick thought his riding was suspect, and when he won, he was pretty arrogant in my view. Again, TV and podcasts have changed my view on the real Fro. Uh, yeah. and this is awesome, but for some reason I can't see it. There it is. Okay. Number one, James Stewart, his arrogance as a racer and some of his antics with Reed and RC. He was mouthy and a little entitled. In my opinion, social media has helped me help soften my opinion quite a bit. 
that's funny because like this this where he said like his antics with Reed, I felt like Reed was dirtyish crap with uh, maybe Stewart. he's thinking I was, of i was a stew fan maybe he's thinking so of like the opposite uh, side of that like the unadilla thing right where like he let but that was that was just the sport back then like that's just how yeah. it was you can't do that now because there's because four or five guys would have passed him if they did that now yeah that's like, true it's just not the same it was a different it was a different era and yeah i don't know I, i've Stu was always i mean he was from this he was on the spotlight before he even started i mean he was Barely sixteen years old, so it was like, yeah, he was another one of those where I never really, it, I didn't have to, he didn't have to come around, like he was, he was there, and yeah, like, yeah, okay, uh, all right, that's our, that's our troll train top five again. Next week is ways to relax. Hit us up, motoxpodshow at gmail Give us your top five ways you like to relax when you're got some downtime. We'll read them on the air for next show. We actually already have a guest locked in for next week, which is pretty cool. So if you guys have questions. Moto X pod show gmail.com also, but we're going to have RJ Hampshire has confirmed and Seth Hammaker has confirmed. And we're going to have Aiden Kiefer on because he went out and raced the spring, uh, the JF seven spring championship at Freestone. He's been out on the East coast, kind of working with Mike Brown and hanging out with the triumph guys and training. Uh, and then he's racing this weekend. So I, you know, let's get Aiden on. Let's see, you know, away from his dad, where he usually does podcasts with his dad. Let's get him on and just kind of see what that'd be cool. How life is going. So those are who we have for next week. As of right now, we might add another one in there. Uh, but now we're going to go into the Evans coolant emails. Evans waterless coolant protects your engine because it always stays liquid. Steam inside the engine creates hot spots and detonation. But with Evans, the metal is always liquid cooled. Used by HRC Honda, Factory Beta USA, and Pro Factory Yamaha, and lots of other teams. Regardless of sponsorship, Evans is in the bikes on the podium. I'm going to start off with uh, old Barry, Barry McCockiner. <laughs> is that, is that really? <laughs> yep, old Barry. Yeah. He says, do you think it would be better racing and safer for the riders if Feld went back to the more technical tracks like back in the 90s? To me, the tracks are the same cookie-cutter tracks where most are doing all the jumps in the first few laps, too fast forcing riders into the sketchy zone. Even the top riders are struggling just to hold on. This is a... a an age-old question, it seems like, and we you know, we talk about this stuff all the time. More technical, though. Like, I watched some old races just the other day. Like, I went through and watched some early 90s and some late 80s. And, I mean, it definitely wasn't just like ex- like we're like now it's jump land, jump land, jump yeah. land. It, it was more technical, I guess, and I don't know if technical but, is the yeah, right but, word. It was just different. The, but the bikes were capable yeah. of such different things. Like it's. I don't think building a track like they used to build would work. But what maybe like the, the discussion has been brought. What, what if they add more airtime where the jumps, they don't go so far, but they go, go higher. higher. Yeah. I like I that. I don't know. Like I'd like to well, see it. Let's try it. My thing is when I, when I look back at, I, I don't go that old cause it's kind of irrelevant to, to relate them to those. Cause the bikes are just so much different. It's different. Of course. I just watched completely it. different thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. if you go back to, you know, 2000, like nine to, 13 mm-hmm. and i mean those 450s had been around for a while fuel injection was there uh i mean obviously the 450s are a little bit different now but they had 450s then and if you watch a lot of those mains like obviously there was some tracks that had ruts and stuff to it but the majority of them were like the stadium tr- the the triples they were like s- scrubbing them completely sideways because there was no ruts they were kind of dry and dusty and allowed to like power slide and have you know and and actually race and i that's what i just can't seem to understand is like how come we never have just like a straight up dry race? Like even like like if you go back and watch like like 2010 and 11 Arizona, like it's like almost like a dust bowl. And now it's like it's one of the drier ones, but it still has like ruts and it doesn't really get like I don't want like, it to be like I know roofed. I know, but it kind of made for better racing in a way. Did it? I, I don't know. I mean, would you rather that or like oh track? I, I like, just would rather the obstacles figure out something different with obstacles to change it up where it's not just yeah. Bro, bro. Like I, you know, and, and it's been talked about before. It's like we have three and five footers. Why can't we do like a four? Yeah, or six. Like, I, I, I think there's some options they could try. I, I don't know exactly what bring, those are. I'm definitely, but, I'm definitely on team. Dr- bring dragons backs. Dragon backs back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea. Like that, you don't have to make them quite as sketchy. And if you don't want to do them, then don't do them. I mean, yeah, there is that. The, the tracks have been a little boring. Over I haven't heard years. one rider say that they really enjoy the way the tracks are now. 
Yeah, there's not a lot of it. I've done some question of the weeks about that, and there's only a couple guys that like were like the dragon that actually like dragons backs though. Like most of the guys were happy they were gone, for the most part. Yeah. But um, I would like to see some changes in track design. I don't know exactly what those are. But it's the cookie cutter is not working for me. No, it's it's there. It's like yeah, you. Know, I mean, you you know exactly. It's like oh, this looks exactly like last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. It's it, this track looks super familiar. Yeah, yeah. It's now I did see they they and they released the track maps for the SMX rounds, mm-hmm. and uh, yep. the the Texas one looks pretty sweet. I'm actually pretty stoked for that one. Well. I'm looking forward to that too. Just to just have another race in Texas is yeah, great. it's cool. Especially uh, since we don't get we don't get Houston anymore. Well, it, it'd be, it's just like oh, rotate, it rotates they rotate that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is just a. I think this is from Dustin. It got cut off. It says, uh, "Good morning. Started listening to your podcast show. Love it. Interview questions are things that we like to hear about, and really great to hear the GNCC off road side of things with their interviews as well. Big fan from British Columbia, Canada." Appreciate that. So that's a really nice email. Um, yeah, I've, I've now officially became a, I've, 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 I've officially done a cross country race. Oh yeah, you did the TCCRA yeah. thing or whatever. Yeah, we, yeah. I think we talked about that on the last show, didn't we? No, because I did it before. I had I had rode and practiced, but I didn't actually oh. race that weekend because it was like I literally just minutes before I got my bike together. Yeah. But I did one the weekend, not the weekend we just had, the weekend before that. And yeah, so yeah, bucket bucket list. Finally item. finished one. Yeah, you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't quit. Nope. Uh, I thought it is is tired. I was getting tired. Like I actually like I knew like I'm not in shape or anything, and I knew that I was going to be tired. So I was kind of just like I was like, man, I'd rather putt this whole race than not finish. Yeah. So I just like I just crawled around and just cruised. <laughs> I've done and that. I was like just second gear, just be just like the whole time. Like right. yeah, it was. I I had, I had a blast though. They're fun. Yeah. Uh, last email. Uh, what's the biggest misconception or misunderstanding of you? So. Have you ever had somebody like, or, or multiple people think something about you that you feel like was like you were really misunderstood? I feel like I feel like I'm, I'm not understood at all by the, by you. By me? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I understand you just fine. You understand that I that I suck. <laughs> I don't really think you suck, man. I just like making fun of you because you, you get spun out. No, I, I, that's just the way I kind of like react to it. I mean, I really don't. I I know I don't deep down feel like that you hate me or anything. I just that's my way to continue the banter. I just yeah. I like steering into the skid rather than, yeah kind of thing. Yeah, I can't really think of anything right off the top of my head. Um, like I could say misconception. Like I've had people say like like Kiefer was like oh you're a cool guy to me, but that's I'm definitely not that. Mm. Uh, I'm not. Come on, man. I talk to everybody. Yeah. No. You. You're. Yeah, you're you're like like super friendly and open to everybody, but it's it's in it is kind of like in a oh okay kind of way, like not like you're not kind of like I guess the best way to uh, like example would be kind of like like Phil, like Phil, like he looks like he's just grumpy and pissed off, but like I've seen him literally like give a kid a, his own jacket because the kid was cold, like like Phil like feels super nice and will bend over backwards for anybody, but you wouldn't ever like see it off the, you know, from his facial expressions or anything. And you, you kind of, you kind of do that sometimes, but that's ridiculous, but you're not that way. So maybe that was, maybe that's one of them. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. You, you think, hmm, I'm trying to take that in. You're, you're not like, you're, it's not like you're like, overly excited to be like, oh hey what's going on like you're just yeah, I you're pretty s- even like well, just kind of yeah, even killed. okay but that's yeah. yeah i just i do stay fairly fairly even yeah yeah, yeah. that's kind of what i mean but I, I i go out of my way to go talk to yeah like, if, I, if, I, if I, a quote, I'm not saying quote, that you fan don't. or whatever yeah. dms me at a race and like hey i want to like meet you I'll, i've come out of the press box more than once and gone down to the crowd yeah and, and to find the person be like yeah i mean well, i don't know why the hell they want to meet me but it has happened so like yeah i'll definitely go out of my way no yeah I, that's not what i was saying it's just like when we didn't you have those interactions yeah. they're pretty even all right our next guest of the night's on and he's gonna be brought to you tonight by blood lubricants scotty do you think all oil is the same it's not it's not it's a bit like food in that you can have all the same ingredients, but a great chef will make something that knocks your socks off. Blood Lubricants was developed from over 40 years of knowledge in the oil business and used by racers in the most grueling motorsports on the planet, including Baja, NASCAR, Indy, NHRA, Sprint Cars, Motocross, Supercross, and many more. Blood Lubricants has a reputation for lasting longer than other brands and is known to keep your bike running up to 30 degrees cooler. 
Chris Kiefer tested that. That's where I got that info from. If it's wrong, blame Chris Kiefer. Simply put, if you want the best oil you can buy in your machine, you want blood lubricants. That's B-L-U-D lubricants, bloodlubricants.com. Use promo code VMX25, all caps, to save. Tonight, Blood Lubricants brings us Justin Shanty. What's up, Justin? Hey, guys. What's happening? Not much, man. We're just cruising through another show, enjoying some Moto Talk. Um, dude, we'll get into this, man. You, uh, We know you were on Pulp last night, so some of our li- a lot of yep. our listeners listen to that, but... Dude, yeah, a hell of a career, and you decided to, after earlier this year, I guess it was, or maybe it was into last year, I was in Pulp Studio that night when you were on, and you said, like, you would never basically leave Kawasaki, but then you decided to leave Kawasaki, (laughs) man. You changed your mind. I I did. You know, it's hard to predict the future. I actually told Bruce, uh, my big boss today, you know, I was like, hey, I had to eat my words last night. I said I would never leave unless they kicked me out. So I said, well, you just kick me out so I don't have to be a liar. So, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, man, shit happens, right? Like, stuff changes. Um, I, w- I mean, I've loved doing it every minute of it. I don't, I mean, good times and bad times. You know, I love going to work. Uh, I just left there just now. I mean, uh, just a bunch of shit changing, man. Just ready to, like I told Steve last night, just kind of over traveling on Wednesday. Obviously, you could you could probably find something where you could do it a little bit less where you do the Friday thing, but I don't know. I'm still relatively young or pretty young, you know, in most, you know, everybody's eyes, but <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to try something new, and I never thought, I mean, I was into NASCAR pretty heavy when I was a kid. Okay. After a few races, my, my mom was a huge Jeff Gordon fan, like, growing up, and uh, one of her friends and everything, so we went to a few races, we went to Bristol, and all that whole thing and then once i didn't I, I hadn't found moto yet before that and then obviously moto just kind of takes over which is cool so found my little you know found riding found found mechanic stuff and then just started this side of the career so i really didn't understand that i really know at the time that uh you could translate over your mechanical skills or you know uh any type of our racing over to what they do you, it seems kind of far apart but once you kind of get into it it's, it's the same so yeah, it going back to the 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 travel and the grind real quick. Like I, I think a lot of people, I'm sure you've heard it over the years. Like, oh, how do I get to do what you do? And they don't really mm-hmm. realize what you do on a day to day. They see what you do Saturday, and that looks really cool. Yep. But they don't see absolutely the seven days a week almost, and the time as you mentioned last night. You know, the time away from your family, and it's not mm-hmm. like you get there at nine a.m. and you're gone by I don't know six p.m. You're there like. 8 a.m. and you leave at 1 a.m. Yeah, I mean, obviously through the years it's it's been pull all nighters. I mean, I can remember back when I worked with the 1110 mods crew, and I mean, we were we were fighting to stay up days at a time. You know, sometimes <laughs> it was like I, I'll never forget going to High Point that year, local race for us over there, and we literally stayed up all night. And like me and Narco Nate, we we kind of we had to we stayed up long enough to get everything done just so we could get over to the track to check our bikes and we're falling asleep driving. And I'm sure that didn't help his condition much, but, um, <laughs> dude, it was brutal. I mean, but you just do it, right. You love it so much. And you just try to keep, you know, pegboarding up the hill and try to get noticed and do this and do that. And then by the time you look back, you're like, fuck, dude, it's been 15 years. Like you're just, but you just love grinding. And I guess you just wake up one day. I don't, people say this all the time, but you do, you just wake up one day and be like, yeah, I'm, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to get, I don't want to work that hard anymore. Or I don't want to travel that much anymore. You know, I just started waking up on Wednesdays, four o'clock in the morning every week and be like, I don't, I don't want to, I, I want to go race, but I don't want to leave this early. Right. You know, and then it's just the, it's the same grind every week. It's a good, I'm a routine guy. So it's nice. You know, you know, fly, boom, boom, boom. But, uh, yeah, it catches up to you, but you kind of, in my eyes, you kind of feel stuck a little bit. We're not really highly educated guys in this industry or not even, sorry, not in this industry, but like on my side of stuff, like just high school, you know? So I didn't go to MMI. I don't really have the credentials on that side. So it's just been like word of mouth, do good work, work at good teams, get noticed with good riders. So you're like, well, to do anything else, like what kind of, what kind of resume do you really have that anybody's going to look at, you know? So this was kind of eye opening on that side. I didn't really know it was an option. And then, man, it really recharged my excitement, my enthusiasm, kind of, put some pep back in my step and, and, uh, yeah, just, just, I mean, obviously super young to, to, 
I don't know. I have a desk job for my eyes. So. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you don't want that, I man. That would be a that would be a struggle uh, with the career yeah. you've had. But I, I want to touch on something you you mentioned. Like you didn't go to MMI, and as I recall on that interview with Pulp that you did when I was in studio a while back. You, mm-hmm. when you first decided you were going to start looking for a job, like didn't somebody tell you like you need to go to a school or something? And then, uh, yeah, yeah. What? Tell I that story. I, I, I think it was Fisher. So I went to I raced arena cross like on the East Coast, and we all qualified uh, to race the final in Las Vegas. Yeah. After the the U.S. Open that year. Yep. Well, we went there, and I was like, oh, dude, perfect opportunity to go around and and uh, look for a job or at least give re- I had a resume all printed out man. and I was all ready to go so of course what do you do you go to the big trucks right my favorite team I rode Cowies my whole life basically since 125s and went over to Fisher I'm like hey how do I get a job here what do I gotta do he's like you know basically go go get an education somewhere go to MMI work with you know kind of blew you off or whatever but I mean I see it now from this side of the fence you're like yeah you just you can't walk off the street and work at one of these teams. A lot of people think they can. It's not, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Right. You got to have experience. You got to be able to work with these guys. I mean, people quickly forget that you're putting a mechanic with a guy that they're paying, you know, tech, you know, at some point millions of dollars over, over several years to, to ride their motorcycle and win at this level. And it, you just, not, just, it can't just be anybody that works on the bike. You know, it's gotta be somebody that's vetted and has experience and can handle the pressure and, handle you know the mag the magnitude of like the rider that's riding the bike you know so i didn't understand that back then so i just went around to every truck you know i talked to keo talked to roger DeCosta, talked to you know anybody that would listen to me for five minutes and yeah basically it was like just just start anywhere you can start if somebody will give you a gig do it yeah and then you'll meet somebody else and you'll do this and you'll bop around and i'm super social anyway so no problem there and yeah just kind of you know, boom, we're here. This is where we're at. And the same, the same logic went into getting this new job. I, I wasn't really banging anybody's doors down, but like I had no problem talking and communicating and negotiating, you know, uh, networking and stuff. So, you know, it's just right place, right time, right time of my life, right time of uh, a bad time of the year, obviously, but it's really hard for a mechanic or anybody in this industry that works for these teams to, switch jobs when you only have right, right now what like two full months to be, make a move and line something up when opportunity comes up so right uh i mean i can't say enough about say man i brought it to him and was like no problem if you need two days or two months whatever my he's like my ideal goal would be uh you know september that would make sense but i'm he's good he's like i'm good don't stress it whenever they need you you go so um that's that that was that was way easier to to, to 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 make a move. Yeah, that took a lot of stress and weight off your shoulders. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Scotty. Hey, Justin, you know, with with the transition to the new job and and your from your tenure as a mechanic and in the motocross world, what are you mm-hmm. most excited to carry over, and what do you think a guy in your position going to that world? Um, was in the most enticing about you from, you know, the people that are hiring you? What, what do you think that they saw the most in? Um, I was already told right from the beginning that they, they really love moto guys. Like I heard it from J bone too. Obviously he's at, he's over on the machine shop side at Gibbs still. And, you know, from them having the motocross team super closely related to what they're doing, like they just, they love it. They eat it up. They eat moto guys up. I don't know if it's how we're wired how we are dry. I don't know. I don't know if it's our, yeah, they, they say it's our attention to detail and, and just the way that we kind of overlap in our industry where there's not as many people involved. So, you know, being able to do like at Mitch's, you can do engines, you can do this, you can do that. You can you know help with the truck, you help with parts, all the, all the stuff. So I think they like that. I think they like our work ethic. I think some of our guys, most of our guys in our industry are probably the hardest working dudes I've ever met. I mean, just bleed for it, die for it, you know, sacrifice, you know, marriages and kids and, you know, balanced relationships and, and never around the families. I mean, I got to give it up. I mean, I'm moving across the country. These guys I've been working with, and you know, they move across the fucking world. Yeah. Like Oscar, yeah. like all the, all these guys, y'all, these guys that, that I met when I was at Pro Circuit or even gotten in the industry, you know, I moved from West Virginia with a pillow. They moved across the country with a duffel bag, like, or across the, the, the world, you know, so. I don't know. I think that we're just, we're, we're cut from a different cloth, all of us. And to, to do the moto thing with the, the mud races and the, the, the grind and we ride, I think as an industry, as a motorsport more than anybody and train and 
you know, I'd put our riders up against some of the best, best athletes in the world. So I think that's probably super eye opening for an organization like that, for, for an industry. So, I mean, what I'm, I think to answer your, like what I'm willing, ready to bring just is like, uh, just my enthusiasm. Like it's all recharged. I'm ready to people and learn all this new, you know, side of, uh, Side of a, a new industry. It's still a shiny, shiny form of racing. What? Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, so, what specifically will you be doing for JGR Toyota? What's what is your role going to be? Yeah. So, uh, uh, I guess I, as I'm told, uh, I'm going to be what they call uh, or a track engine support, you know, technician. Uh, basically, uh, I will. Ty Gibbs is right now he's on the 54. So I'll be in charge of the 54 car uh, at the shop, basically like I am now with Adam stuff. Uh-huh. I don't do any of the car building, anything like that. There's a whole crew. Like I said, there's way more people involved as I understand. Of course. So basically under the hood is what I'll be in charge of. I'll be the Toyota representative for that engine. Um, so I'll load the maps as I understand into the motor or into the, into the ECU, you know, pull data, uh, make sure the packages they run, they run a lot of different packages for different types of racing. So mm-hmm. setting the car up from the engine point of view, um, and then getting, getting to the track, you kind of oversee that stuff throughout the day. It's kind of like what our crew chiefs in our industry do. Um, kind of like, I mean, our team's set up like that, like kind of like what Oscar does, you know, he, he, he oversees what I do on the bike and then, you know, checking in with Dean and checking in with Kaipo and testing and, um, I guess as soon as I start, I'll be going to some tests. My first, my first race won't be to Kansas, I don't think, with the tie. And then, uh, my role is a little bit different, as I understand, uh, with, with how the tuners are set up. They have like a roster system where they can only have so many people work on the car at one time in the garage. Okay. Like the structure of it's way different, uh, which is actually cool because it gives everybody, um, the opportunity to be just as successful, um, on any type of budget as any other team. So, they say you can only have five guys in there. You can only have five guys. So, you know, it, it's not beneficial for you to bring 20 guys to be able to help in a mud race when you can only have so many people. So, you know, a lower end team can still, you know, be competitive, which is, as I understand how NASCAR has it set up anyway. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, what I yeah, like, so, it, oh, keep going, go. No, sorry. So th- there's races that I'll actually be like, uh, on Jimmy, like roster to be on Jimmy Johnson's car, which is pretty cool when he does those select rounds because he's a Toyota guy now uh, with Legacy. And yeah, so it sounds like I'll be able to be up, you know, different weekends with different teams. So get to, you know, get get established out there with all the different Toyota brand, uh, Toyota, uh, sorry, teams that, that run Toyota stuff. So um, that part's pretty, pretty cool. It's not just going to be on one guy right away. It could change year to year, but as I understand it, it's going to be a lot of the like, testing side of stuff and then doing tie stuff on these extended races. I, I have to imagine you're super excited. Like, you know, the travel, yeah, it's a little, it's better for you, but it's just something new. And I'm sure there's nerves. Like, you're kind of like, oh, wow, can I even do this? Which adds to yeah. excite. It kind of adds to excitement. Like, it's, I, I'm sure you have to fe- feel revitalized. Like, you kind of mentioned that already. Uh, yeah, like, it's a, it's a. Oh, we lost you, Shanty. Are you there? Something different early on and like in the off season like after a year or two and uh i i thought in cali but i realized it wasn't going to be shiny and new and i you know at, the, at my core it's just about racing you know the, the the adrenaline the excitement the fact that like you know you go out there you try to win you know all that stuff so guest job like i said isn't going to cut it at this point in my life so when this came along i was i mean honestly jamie i'm scared shitless like i don't <laughs> i don't know any i mean if it wasn't for Mario, my, my buddy that, that works over there now on Reddick's car, um, he's been telling me all the way through it, like how it is and reassuring me everything's going to be fine. And, you know, our skill set, you know, drops over really easily. Um, you know, we've had a couple of jokes going along the way, like with Nick Way. I've been telling him, I don't know what the hell SAE tools are. I don't know what that dash is in between the one and the four. Like, <laughs> I use metric my whole life. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's just little stuff, you know, that you got to learn, like that I've not really ever cared to learn, you know, like I've always been a metric guy, but yeah, just, just, just the, the nerves of not being there yet, you know, and having this much time to think about it. So I've had to kind of compartmentalize all my, my thoughts and really focus on getting the tasks I need done here first. So finishing this thing out with. 
You're cutting in and out so, a little bit. You're cutting in, in, in and out a little bit. Started with the new team, and what's that? I said you're cutting in and out just a little bit. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm. You there? Yeah, yeah. We got you now. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm at the shop too late. I completely spaced my time. I just, I honestly running around with my head cut off with moving, and I was packing up my stuff at the shop today. Thursday's my last day, and I, I just, I too closely scheduled everything. Honestly, it's all good. No worries. But, we uh, won't keep you that long. No, you're good. Um, but yeah, I like I said, I'm super nervous and excited and all, all the emotions, man. I'm sad to leave. I'm, I'm like I said, I, I I feel like I've done what I came to do, in uh, in moto, I'm really really sad about all my all my relationships that I've built over the years and seen everybody and just every I have something different going on with everybody that I see. It's it's cool, like it's our own little thing. So that 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 part makes me pretty sad. So yeah. Other than that, uh, ready for a new change. Ready to. I lived over there when I lived, when I worked for Les Smith, so I'm familiar with the area. Um, so I've been up around like Norman in the shop and was actually over at JGR when they had the motocross team when they were doing the amateur stuff. So familiar with some faces over there. So it won't be like a complete shock, but really it will be. Yeah, it's going to be different, but you're, you're going to do, I know what kind of guy you are, man. You're going to su- succeed. No worries. I'm not, I'm not worried about you. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll get the hang of it. Like I yeah, said, they're, yeah. they're super routine. There's, there's, there's nothing. I mean, they're so structured with all that stuff. It sounds like that uh, I'm just gonna just gonna plug me in and just start working. If I can get some repetition under me, that's how I work. Like just keep you know rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat day after day. Like I'll, I'll get the hang of it. So Absolutely. Just to have a lot more time off to to do some other stuff too. So just a couple more questions for you. Yeah, sure. Anytime. Yeah, as, uh, you you know you picked a good time. Toyota just got the the win this past weekend. I've I had I hadn't really followed NASCAR in the last you know, decade or so. I've watched a little bit when I was younger, but I've really been getting into it this year. And I man, it's it's such a fascinating sport. And it's actually you know it's like you said, you know, it's a it's a testament to what you're going to be able to do with the car because you know it's it all comes down to that car. Yeah, the drivers do incredible things, but it's got to be a true test mm-hmm. to your skill of what you've acquired, and it is the next level. So uh, just and not really a question, just more, kind of more of just your you have, the joy of being able to do a NASCAR where the car is the is the future. Yeah, that's it's, it's interesting because I've never really been around four wheel that much. I mean, like I said, I was a fan of it, but when you really get into the nuts and bolts of it, I mean, you could you could probably agree and say that like Moto is probably I mean what eighty twenty ninety ten like it, it's all about the rider. It, mm-hmm. the, the rider makes the difference. It's the as we say the meat in the seat. Like those guys. <laughs> I mean, you, you talk about the older champions, like they can overcome a bad bike. They can overcome, you know, a shitty track or this or that. So I feel like the car on, on the other hand is so much of the deal that, I mean, the, the games that they can make are just so minute. So obviously the driver's skill is involved. No, don't, I'm not discrediting that at all, but right. it seems like to me, the more I've gotten into it and really looked at the technical side, like making gains in the engine or the the aero package or even the strategy on pit lane. Like I saw this weekend, everybody's doing a little bit different strategy with tires. And um, it's super interesting to see just a different take on all that. Cause the, the pit crew makes such a, a difference and we don't have that at all. You know, we never have to stop. And if we do, you're, you're never going to be at the front. So yep. it's just a salvage moment at that point. So uh, super interesting on, on how all that shakes down and what strategy plays out. And some guys are really willing to risk it. Some of these crew chiefs and it, and it, and it, and it pays off for mm-hmm. them. And some guys take a more conservative approach and it's cool to see the different thinking there. Uh, Justin, I want to ask, I've got a vital MX forum question for you from uh okay. forum member, Justin Bogles Whitfoot. That's his uh, <laughs> username. Uh, this ought to be good. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually not bad. We all know AC okay. has been struggling with nagging injuries the past couple of seasons. What do you say to your rider to keep them motivated when they're going through something like that? Man, that's been probably the it's the toughest situation because there's nothing we can do to help him. Like we, well, I mean, say I take that back. We have done everything on the bike we can do to help him, but we know it's not going to be much relief. We're talking maybe a half a percent or something here or there. Like Oscar has gone to the end to the end of the earth on testing with, with different, I mean, peg heights and bar mounts and seats and bumps and grips and bar widths and anything we can do to get the fatigue out of his hand for maybe get an extra lap out of him or get, you know, an, an extra, you know, whatever time-wise to, to qualify on the long motos outdoors and stuff. So 
And it's a it's a real struggle. It, it's it's really put us to the test, you know, as a team. Um, and then, you know, I think it, it really bonded, like strengthened Adam and I's relationship because we, I kept telling him, like, you know, Oscar said it best, like, he's always apologized to us, you know, that he can't perform the way he wants to be. We know who he is and what he's made of. And we've always just told him, he, you know, he's sorry, he's sorry, but he's the one that's going through it. Like, we're going through it with him, but we don't know the pain, you know. Like, I can, I know he's a bad dude, man. He's a bad boy. Like, so he can throw down, like, the fact that he throws down the lap times that he does, in the last few years when I know he's literally riding with one hand, like we need to Velcro it to the throttle so it doesn't blow off in a rhythm section. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough, dude. It's tough. Like I think we've said everything we could say as far as like inspirational stuff or uplifting and stay positive. It's, it, that's a hard question, dude. It, it's been very trying for all of us, rider included. And you know, it's, it's, it's sad to see a guy that has so much, life and potential and enthusiasm and all that get just get kicked the just kicked the kicked his kick in dude year after year with with how much promise he has and how much how much he won leading up to it like i I was fortunate enough to work for him the year after he won his outdoor title and we're just like hell yeah dude here we go the guy he is the he is kawasaki you know he's a kawasaki guy only bike he's ever ridden and only manufactured Mm -hmm. so here I am like, hell yeah, dude, golden ticket. As far as like being able to go out and be the mechanic at the level I want to be. Like Joey and I were at a high level, you know, unfortunately we didn't get the titles that we wanted or it didn't come our way. But now, you know, you get a, a title contending guy dropped right in your lap and you're like, all right, cool. Like you've set yourself up a, in, a, in a good spot. And then yeah, I just did it. I mean, we had some success. We had a lot of success, but it's just, it just, it's just sad that, he didn't get what he wanted out of it, you know? And, you know, it's just, I don't know. It just kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Mm. Yeah. I feel bad. Cause he's such a nice guy. He's so passionate about the sport. Not even, we mm-hmm. don't, you, you don't even have to bring in the potential that we all knew right. he had. It's just the that, guy yeah. that he is, the human that he mm-hmm. is. It, it's, it's a heartbreak. Yeah. It's a heartbreak for people that don't even really know him. They just are fans of him. So yeah, I get it, man. Absolutely. Yep. Do, do you think that yep. there's a another avenue of racing that he would excel at that you know wouldn't be as stringent on his injuries? Um, you know, he hasn't really talked much about other forms of racing. I mean, I'm sure those guys at that level, man, like people don't realize they are on even even with the the injuries played with now, he'd go and just smack anybody around <laughs> at any other level. Like it, it's crazy. Like the, these guys are these guys beat to a different drum when they're, when they're these, this, this type of, mm-hmm. uh, this level of athlete, you know, like their fitness is unmatched. Like I said, like, I mean, he would, he would excel at the, several different forms of racing. He hasn't really talked much about it. Um, really, I don't think I, I've heard him really talk about any other form of racing, but, um, I'm sure he, he if he wanted, if he, that's, he's the type of guy, whatever he puts his mind to, he's going to be great. Right. So, yep. you know, if it's, uh, if it's uh, go kart racing, I mean, he'll 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 be great. I I, I don't know, like with his hand, like I, I honestly believe, and I think he would agree that if he took you know a, a ton of time off and was able to heal the nerves in his arm, uh, maybe you could get some some uh, results from it. But you just never know, you know. And obviously, moto, nothing waits for you. You know, you take a year off, but you just scared to death of what that's going to do for your competition, for your your base. You know what you build up. You know physically every year and you know whether you lose touch so that really wasn't an option for him you can't just say yeah i'll just i'll just take a year off and see if this helps so you just got to mm-hmm. stay in it so yeah yeah i don't know i don't know i mean he, he could he could probably be one of the best drag racers i, I don't know like he, <laughs> like he's got, oh yeah he, reaction he, time yeah he gets great starts right he's always been been on on the gate and i heard eli talking about it last night about start maps and this and that and we were doing the same thing and then we went back to old school just his reaction time his his uh you know quickness with his his peripheral and all that stuff what they work on and he got it back so start map is usually for most guys like a band aid to get their get their shit back together I would say yep and then uh, once I feel like you got to figure back out you can go and do it yourself because the, the 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 dirt and everything with the, even with the grates it just changes so much mm-hmm. whether it's slick or tacky and how they can just manipulate the clutch and how much they want it to spin and wheelie and stuff so. I think he'd be a good drag racer. I think he's going to be good whatever he decides to do. I, I have a feeling we're going to see him 
doing some TV stuff. I think that might be in his future. Yep, um, yep. I know he, I know he's excited about that. He's always been excited to yeah. be on the broadcast. Like, like you said, he's, he's a massive enthusiast of the sport. I mean, knows everything about every race in the past. Like when he trains, he watches, <laughs> you know, old 07 videos and he talks about it. Like you'll mention a track. He's like, Oh, that was, uh, that was Orlando 07. Right. You know, like yeah. him, him and Nick can go back and forth on races and knows all about Nick's career. And, <laughs> and, uh, so he, he brings a really good, uh, insight to the sport and he's, he's younger minded and he's a recent racer. And I think all those are going to be, be great every time he goes on the broadcast. So, I mean, I that, that, that's a, I think it'll be an asset for them to have. Absolutely. Well, Shanty, dude, it's been a pleasure having you on here. Uh, it was really cool that I got a chance to meet you over the last few years and talk to you a few times and, Dude, just good luck on your future endeavors, and uh, I know you're going to succeed, man. You're you're a good dude, and you're a badass dude. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you taking the time to have me on, and yep, and uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch. I'll I'll come talk for you anytime. Sounds good, man. I mean, yeah, I'll we, come talk moto with you, dude. I'm well, gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to come to some now that they're lining up. I know if I end up in Dover this year, like I said, my schedule's a little bit different now. But if I end up in Dover, it's only I think an hour and a half from Philly. I might try to rally a crew together. They're all big moto moto guys. They're always messaging me on like when the race is on and this and that. So I might put a crew together and come cruise around Philly for as a fan for the first time. Absolutely. That'd be great, man. Um, I won't so, be at that one, but you know, m- most of the regular uh, guys, Mathis and all those guys would be okay. there. So it'd be good. I'll, uh, yep. but we'll definitely stay in touch. We'll have to see how things are going. I'll check in on you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hit me up when you're around Charlotte for the race. So, uh, yeah, maybe we can, maybe we can do something. That'd be cool, man. Well, Justin, again, thank you for your time and good luck, buddy. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. Always a pleasure. Yep. See ya. See ya. All right. It's Justin Shanty brought to you tonight by Blood Lubricants. Man, that's cool that he got this opportunity. Yeah. I hate to see him go, but he's, yeah, he's a really nice guy. I know he's not the first guy to go from motocross to NASCAR, but it's cool to see that that avenue is open for those guys. And like, um, the, one of the points that he brought up was, you know, he said that they looked into, they liked the motor guys because their attention to detail. And like, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. You know, a tire comes off a of NASCAR. Like, yeah, it's not ideal. They don't, they don't want that, but they have a roll cage. Like they'll be okay. A tire, a chain comes off a dirt bike. Like, I mean, your rider's going to the hospital. So like, yeah, I think that, that the level of, uh, of, of what's, I'm, I'm thinking of a better word. But now I can't think of it in stalling. So it's okay. You know what I meant? Just keep it, yeah. Keep <laughs> things tight. Yeah. Uh, let's do, we're going to do the procs highs and lows. And then we've got a couple more guests to get to that, uh, we didn't announce, but we're going to do, oh. we've got a couple quick guests. Uh, but first of all, Prox is rooted. What? I said exciting. Yeah, you don't even know. Did, nope. I, did I not tell you? No. Nope. I talked to, I must have told TJ about one of them. Okay. Well, I did. I mentioned Lewis. Lewis is going to come on and talk about the. No, like, never told me that. Okay. All right. Well, you don't need to know then. Prox is rooted in racing for motocross to off road and supporting teams such as Ampro Yamaha, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, and SLR Honda. They've been supplying quality components for almost 50 years from compl- complex jobs like an engine rebuild to simple maintenance, including filters, chains, and sprockets. Prox, is, Prox aims to bridge the gap between OE quality and affordability. So find Prox at your local dealer or visit prox-usa.com and search for parts for your bike today. Uh, Prox highs and lows. You want to do yours? You want me to do mine? Yeah, uh, lows is going to be, you know, especially after the interview you just had, I'm going to say AC getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, yeah. Yep. It's just bummer, man. I like, think he's going to race in two weeks, though. They're still okay. saying he's, he's going to Oh, that, that'll be good. Like, he's not hurt, hurt. Yeah, but, but just, he's, uh, it's just I mean, he's, yeah. another just another thing yeah. out of his control that just yeah. happened. It's yeah, it was sad. Um, and then my high is going to be Tomac getting his first win of the year. Okay, that it. Yep. Well, I'm going to go. Oh, and then I'm running again. I rode it this weekend. My lows were my my Loretta's prep is not on point right now, but we're gonna we're we're working <laughs> on that. Uh, I need. I'm going to start riding more again now that I'm not hurt. My ribs aren't hurting. My back isn't hurting. So yeah, Loretta's prep is a little weak right now, but we're gonna get there thanks to troll training and so how many how much more time do you have till the area? Well, the area I just did one oh, area. Re- the, I get them all backwards. I'm doing the area here this weekend at Three Palms. Oh, well, you got three days. Um, all right, four days. <laughs> yeah, but that, the areas are pretty easy. It's the regionals that are troublesome. And as I said earlier, what class are you doing? Forty five. Forty five. Yeah. Senior. Look, there is not a there is not even a slim chance that I make it. Through the regionals, but not with that attitude, the, I'm with Kiefer. everybody keeps I'm with saying. When them. they're taking four people out of like thirty, and about twenty five of them are like much, much, Pull much a whole better shot than you. and let three guys pass you. In okay, well, that's a good goal. But the reality <laughs> is, 
I just I know, want to be in better shape for riding again like I was last year. That's really more where my low point is, is that I'm not where I was a year ago, but we're going to get there. My other low is Frontier Airlines can suck it. Well, they just suck. Sounds like there's a story here. It, it's just you start out like Frontier and what's the other one? Uh, Spirit. Probably fine if you're just going to like run to, to Vegas yeah, overnight and take lot, a backpack. But if yeah. you start carrying bags and stuff like that, all of a sudden, it costs just as much as a as one of the more premier airlines. Yeah. But then you're uncomfortable because their seats suck and it's just crap. And they're they're yeah, coaxed, see, I, like, I I always hear people talk about the fly stuff. I've never flown frequently enough to yeah. really. Well, it have, sucked. Yeah, Frontier sucked. My highs are also Eli winning. The fact that I did actually qualify, even though it's very easy, and my last week in California, I got to spend a lot of time with Amber. Dark. That, it was really, really great. Spent. It, it was yeah. just nice having her like right down the road, you know, where we could hang out every night. Oh, uh, so you didn't? I, yeah. I, so you didn't, you didn't stay with her? Uh, no, I stayed at Kiefer's house. Okay. Yeah. It'd be kind of weird to go out there, like you know, she's got kids who are actually apparently listening right now. So I'm gonna say hi to Miranda no. Page and Madeline, and uh, I don't think that uh, Austin, her son's listening, probably because he's at his dad's. But saying hi to the girls, got to meet them, go bowling. That was a lot of fun. Did, you, did they Paige, beat you? Paige brought me a sticker. Is that a donut? School. It is a donut, yeah. Is it scratch so I, I still have it. Um, no, it doesn't smell like a donut, unfortunately. But it uh-huh. is a donut. I have it. I don't, so that's, but. Did they beat you in bowling? Um, she, Amber beat me. Amber <laughs> sucks. She beat me in pool. She beat me in bowling. Bro. Yeah, dude, she's a, she's a shark. Yeah. She starts out like bad, like play two games. She started out like oh, she's taking it easy on you. Well, then, like halfway through, all of a sudden, she just starts like hitting. Yeah, spares oh, actually, and strike. you know what? I, I remember oh, I'm good at this. I just got lucky. Yeah, like, yeah okay. Oh, all of a sudden, I remember I'm great at this. Uh, but yeah, the girls were really, really fun. They're cool. Uh, <laughs> if you're listening, to Miranda, Miranda was not happy. She was grumpy when she got there, but she she came around, got a hug when they left. She, yeah, so. No. A lot of fun with the girls, but had a lot of fun hanging out with Amber. And uh, we went to a drive-in movie theater, which we don't even have those out here anymore, but that was pretty nostalgic. It's pretty yeah. cool. Just, yeah, I had a lot of fun and bowling and good times. That time, sounds like so. a good time, man. Yeah, that was definitely Too, hot, too bad TJ's not here because he, apparently TJ hates dates. TJ hates dates. <laughs> TJ hates anything that anybody likes. <laughs> so TJ's an idiot. Yeah. We'll, we'll just Stop acting like an idiot. <laughs> You're the idiot. That's cool, man. Don't be an idiot. I'm changed not, my life. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like you had a good time. Happy that you did have that. a good time. I got a, I got a shout out to Heather Kiefer for introducing us. Matchmaker. And here we are three months later, and it's, yeah, it's like we've known each other for years. Yeah, so it's, it's cool, It's man. pretty great. It's pretty awesome. great. So, yeah, um, it's pretty awesome. So that's that's definitely my my prox high high. <laughs> and then she's going to go to Nashville with me, too. So that's cool. Oh, cool. And she'll be here for a couple of days after and meet my kids. Yeah. yeah. There's, you know, like what? Oh, what was that show uh, where they had the blended families and there was like fourteen kids? Uh, Dude, there's been a lot of those. So no, no, there was one. It was. You can't had, say no, no. There's had, been a lot. It had of them. Uh, Suzanne Summers. That, in it. I remember. Was that Eight Is Enough or No? Like, I, I know what show you're talking you know about. Talk, I can't yeah, remember what, what called, was though. Dang, that's gonna. Yeah. They started off where they were the theme park and they were all riding the roller coasters. Yes. And stuff, which I know that that was like a lot of. That was like every '90s sitcom yeah, started off much, with that, but pretty much, yeah. Oh man, that's gonna that's gonna drive me nuts. I'll try to well, find out. What it anyway, is. good times, a lot of fun. So um, yeah, we'll we're gonna well, there'll probably be more highs coming with. Amber. It's funny, I I tagged her uh, in a post finally, and like her, we were at the drive-in, and her phone just her she has step one of those, by step. Oh yeah, she has one of those Apple watches. Mm-hmm. So like the the uh, Instagram logo kept popping up her phone because as soon as I tagged her, she started getting all these requests for her, people trying to follow her. Yeah, she's, yeah she, she, does she, does she know that she's dating a media mogul and she's going to have to get used to the paparazzi and the, and the, I mean, she's and the already limelight? been to a couple of races with me, so she knows how, yeah. how it is. She's, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Just that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Shooing the fans away. <laughs> she's going to be my security. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, good stuff. But uh, let me work on getting this next guest on. But yeah, those, those are the highs, man. Uh, locked into a relationship. Nice. Was not expecting it. That's how it works. 
That's what everybody says. But uh, yeah, we got our next guest of the night on. Um, let me find the EVS read real quick. Over the past 39 years, EVS Sports has established itself as the leader in innovation and technology when it comes to designing protection gear for today's motocross riders. Athletes like RJ Hampshire, Kyle Chisholm, Freddie Noren, Axel Hodges, and Travis Pastrana all wear EVS when they race, ride, or whatever Travis decides to do that day. So check out evs-sports.com and use the code VITALMX30 to save and gear up like the pros. Uh, that is all caps on that VITALMX30. We're not doing a EVS picks for the next race because we're off this coming week. So tonight, EVS brings us Kevin Newell from flaggerfinder.com. What's up, Kevin? How you doing, Jamie? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's been a bit. I think we had you on last year before Daytona or right after Daytona, yeah. maybe? Yeah, uh, I didn't. We didn't ever end up syncing up for the podcast. So okay. You and I ran into each other at Daytona when our flight got delayed. There's another point for uh, Delta, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you were just yeah. talking about Frontier and Spirit, but uh, yeah, we I'll got delayed. Delay. And we had a little bit. I'll take a delay with Delta over the flight with Frontier, I think. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay, That's I right. thought we did get you on, but yeah. Yeah, we uh, had a we had a little Bojangles stop too. So yeah, I've never yeah, right ate at a Bojangles. Pretty good. Heck it's yeah. a chicken, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Yep, not bad. Um, well, tell and, us about uh, tell us about FlaggerFinder.com and what it is and how it's been what's been going on with it. Absolutely. Well, I am just a fan of the sport, like you were. You know, started from humble beginnings, if you will. And I really just I've been watching the races for decades now, and we've all seen it. We've seen Jason Anderson step out there onto the track and grab a flag. We've seen Nick Way step in it's time that we as a professional sport pick up our game a little bit and, uh, and start having some better quality flagging out there. Uh, whether that's purely just quantity of people, which is often, often a struggle for these local racetracks. Um, but on top of quantity is also quality. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, it, it was time somebody set out to do something. And so really it started from a simple website that I set up for Thunder Valley. I partnered with them. And they came to me saying, hey, typically we need 50 or so flaggers and 10 wheels on the ground, folks. You'd think in Denver we could pull from all these different areas and we'd have a surplus of people. But truthfully, they struggle every single year to just get the numbers, mm. purely quantity of, of people. And so I set up this website that people can go to, submit their contact information, and register to be a flagger. Now, it comes with a caveat. It doesn't automatically get you like a spot as a flagger. Mm -hmm. It's more a repository for the track promoters and race organizers to lean on if they need to supplement the current pool of people that they typically work with on a year to year basis. Okay. There's a lot of returning folks. And, um, and so, you know, last year I made calls out to everybody. I, I met you in Daytona because I was going down there to meet with, um, a couple of the AMA folks, as well as Kerry Coombs and all those things went well. Discussions were really great. They're super supportive of the endeavor. Um, that is to say we are not currently affiliated with the AMA by any means. There's some liability things there that have to be ironed out and everything first before we go mm -hmm. spreading their logo on our flyers and that kind of thing. But they do have, or we do have their support and that's been crucial to the advancement of this. Uh, last year, we built a lot of momentum and got flaggers for all different, all of the 11 different tracks on the circuit. Um, some of the tracks, candidly, up front, weren't super bought in on the idea. They were a little hesitant. Like, who is this guy? He's a, he's a nobody, just not an industry guy. Yep. Like, he came out of nowhere. What's, what's kind of the shtick here? They didn't really know. And they're asking, you know, who's, who's going to pay you for this? Or who's going to supplement that? Or whatever. He, how are you going to do it? And I just told them, like, I, I'm just a guy who saw a need for an improvement in the sport that I literally have obsessed over since I was in fifth grade. It was time for a change. And so last year met with a little bit of hesitation this year. It's been full gung ho. I've oh, gotten good. so many different reports back from the track organizers that have just said, Hey, you know, last year we had five people call out the day of or the day before, and we didn't have enough people and we were able to call on your list and bring in a couple last minute fill-ins and that was enough to supplement our, our needs, you know? And so I felt like that was a really big success this year. Thunder Valley came to me again and said, Hey, we really need you. Last year went so much smoother than usual. Um, would you be willing to help us out again? So 
We're back at it. Uh, the opening outdoor series. This is for outdoors only. Mm-hmm. Feld has their own crew of flaggers. They do all their kind of sourcing separately, but we cover the outdoors or we're helping to supplement the outdoors. And so if you're interested, anybody out there listening, Mark, uh, excuse me, May 25th is the opening round at Tala. Um, go ahead and visit flaggerfinder.com. Visit the 2024 SMX page and register your information there. We'd love to have your support. We'd love to get those, uh, that spreadsheet filled out with tons of people. And ideally, I know this is long winded, but ideally I'm set out to acquire, like recruit these people, retain them. And then ultimately one day I would like to have some kind of training involved, right? Like we had this scenario last weekend where the AMA put out the, the medic flag, right? And there was uncertainty as to like, should it have been out? Should it not have been out? Should the racers have bought? Like, what do you do? I think all of that comes with communication from the riders themselves and then implementing that with the AMA and just kind of structuring the rules and, and the protocols around what's best for the racing. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, long-term goal there, uh, it's, it's a lot to chew on or a lot to bite off to say like, Hey, I'm going to revamp this and train everybody and whatever. But it starts with getting the quantity of people we need. Then we start parsing it down by quality and having repeat flaggers yeah. each and every year. And ultimately one day maybe have a training program where we can get some, uh, some safety built in there. Yeah. I could see that happening because you know, you've already said some tracks have reached out and needed your service. And if that word of mouth spreads where, Hey, this guy is legit. He has people that are willing to come out. They're reliable we can use this then maybe eventually they'll start being, Hey, let's put a little, a few bucks into this. Let's, let's, let's partner up. Let's, you know, make sure that these guys are doing a good job. Like I, I think I can see it having legs. Yeah. Thank you. I, I would love to make it a, a, like a more, it's always been cool to me. I've been a flagger. I've been there in the front row seat, waving the flag, getting pelted by dirt. Like (laughs) it's so much fun for me, but I also want to make it fun for the people that don't necessarily enjoy standing out in 110 degree heat or don't want to be on their feet for eight hours a day. Like there should be some kind of incentive. There used to be access to the pits that was pulled kind of around COVID time and it's never returned. And with all the implementation of like the WMX rounds that we're having and the futures of the kids, the flaggers don't get many breaks in between. And so they're really working pretty hard all day long. You have to stay attentive. And I think you should be rewarded for that. And if we can make it a monetary reward, you know, maybe it's 50 bucks, maybe it's a hundred dollars. That would be sweet. But like more than anything, I think we can get some swag bags. I think we can get some sponsor codes. I think we can get some involvement from in or out of the industry to really help supplement this and get people excited about flagging. It's kind of a joke, right? Everyone cracks on weed for (laughs) did he really flag or not and everything, right? Like, being a flagger is almost what frowned upon, right? I'm a racer. I'm, yeah, I'm going to watch the race. Until I'm they need the flagger. Yeah. Yeah. Until they exactly. need the flagger, yeah. And everyone loves to moan about it the weekend after. Like, oh, that dude shouldn't have done that. Or look at that lady. She couldn't even run up the hill to flag. Like, then get your butt out there. You yeah. know, go ahead. Sign up on flaggerfinder.com. Come on out to any one of your local rounds, whatever it is that's closest to you. We'd love to have your support. We'd love to have your involvement. It only helps the sport. So awesome. that's where we're starting. Um, it's maybe too soon to judge, but there may be a need for arena cross. Uh, so we may even start dabbling in that a little bit. Um, we're just going to kind of see where it goes and how it grows. But I'm really excited about it. Steve Burns over at Thunder Valley has been a huge, huge help. David Claybaugh, big supporter as well. He's the track owner out there. Mm-hmm. So big shout out to them. Um, but yeah, that's that's my spiel. That's my stick. Hey, I pr- yeah, I appreciate you reaching out. And guys, flaggerfinder.com. Like if it's something that you'd be willing to do and you thought you know somebody that might want to do it, go sign up. You know, I mean, you're not obligated necessarily, but it's it'd be good to have you in the system and – Let's get this thing going. Maybe we'll get some better flaggers and some more support for that thing because it is a safety concern. You want to keep yeah. the rider safe. And I like that there's going to, that gives you an avenue to have like a digital platform for like a, yeah. like a database. Like, oh, this, so this is Joe so and so. He's flagged at eight, you know, 18 races. And, you know, like I, I think that that's the, the, the way it can grow is, is, is inevitable. I'm like, yeah. there's a lot to it's it. Not a, it's, not, it's a good idea. I like it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Well, there's a, there's definitely some folks that travel around the whole country that have, you know, put in their name for all 11 rounds. And oh, those cool. kind of folks, 
are awesome, right? They, those people have experience, and by the end of the, the series, they're certainly familiar with the process, and they can they can kind of be that elevated role as opposed to just the standardized flagger. They can yeah. be a, a wheels on the ground and be a little bit more involved. So all that's really exciting. Um, I, I, I really look forward to just kind of seeing where this takes us. Right now, like I said, I'm doing this pro bono. This is just for the sport, for the love of the game. Um, I just would love to see kind of what, what kind of traction we can get. I really appreciate you guys. It was so serendipitous to run into you kind of when you were getting your new beginnings at yeah. Vital. You yep. just kind of transferred over at that point. And, you know, we, we ran into each other, like I said. So I figured no better place to kind of debut this uh, if, uh, if I could get some time on here. So I appreciate it. No problem, Kevin. I appreciate you uh, letting me know. And, uh, yeah, thanks for jumping on yeah. here. And one more thing, if yep. I can bring it back a couple segments, you sure. guys were doing your top five likes and don't likes or whatever. Yeah. I had a couple that I thought you might've missed. Okay. Forkner was one that I did not like at all. Coming out of amateurs, I felt like he was super hyped up, but super cocky and wasn't much of a fan. But I okay. mean, if anything, this story over the last few years has just been so gut wrenching. You can't help but not love the guy. I find, I just, I feel so bad yeah. for him, and also I'm I'm rooting so hard for him. So Forkner was one that I thought of. Mookie was another. Mm. When I was a kid watching Bubba's World, and <laughs> I saw Mookie, lazy old Mookie, didn't want to do anything. <laughs> I was looking at Fishing. it, right, as a kid who's like, you have Big James as your dad, you have multiple tracks in your backyard, and you're wasting it. Like, you're squandering this opportunity, right? He didn't want to ride. He wasn't really all that bought in. And now I just love Mookie. It's the same thing. I think I root for the underdog, but I love Mookie. Yeah. So I love seeing him out there. And then one that I liked, but grew to not like anymore <laughs> is Baggett. Baggett. Oh. I, I loved Baggett. I felt like Baggett was always, again, the underdog, the chip on his shoulder. Uh -huh. You know, I don't have a professional dad or whatever. And when <laughs> yeah, he made yeah. that pass on Tomac, that's like 2014, 2015, whatever it was, Thunder Valley, Thunder Valley yeah. over the top, I could still get chills down my back thinking about it. So when I saw that, I loved Baggett. But then here we are, and he just like left us behind. And I think there was some other little nuance to it with the, the Tucker Rocky team or Rocky Mountain ATV and stuff like that. So maybe not entirely on him, but damn, I was let down by, by Baggett when he just kind of disappeared into yeah, the ether. So. They signed whatever NDA or whatever. He, like, they are legally cannot talk about it. I've reached out. I actually texted with uh, Keeley a couple weeks ago trying to get Blake on, and I said, hey, we will not talk about the Tucker Rocky thing. Let's just talk about Breaker and you know, him being a moto yeah. dad now. Yeah. And she said, uh, you know, like, well, text him and see. He might be into that. And then I did, and he just didn't respond. Mm -hmm. But he's just – he never really enjoyed the the media stuff and all that. So, but yeah, but yeah, I I, hear, I see where you're coming from. Like with Austin, I knew the family, and I like as a kid, I, I liked him. But but you're not alone in that um, that thought. So yeah, I think those were good picks, man. I appreciate yeah. you weighing in. Absolutely. Well, hey, thanks again. I yep. uh, appreciate you both. Keep Absolutely. doing what you do. I love listening to it on a weekly basis. Oh, awesome. thank you. And, uh, Best of luck to you guys. Hope to see you at one of these rounds coming up here soon. Sounds good, man. We'll stay in contact. Thanks again. You bet. Thanks, right, Jake. Bye. All right. Kevin Newell from Flagger Finder. Let's make That's a... That's cool, man. I yeah. think it's a good idea. We got one more uh, guest to get on. I'm going to work on getting him on. But, yeah, this has been a pretty good show. What do you think? It, how, yeah. How's the, how's the YouTube is, comments? Tonight? I think we're, we're, we're creeping on the longest show we've done in a while. Uh, we're almost, we're at, almost at three, three hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Last guest of the night's on. Uh, we have used all our sponsor lists tonight, so this <laughs> guest is going to be brought to you by Jeremy Seaware Racing. Tonight, Jeremy Seaware brings us Lewis Phillips. What's up, Lewis? Hello. How are you? We're good, man. Hey, just... We need some more enthusiasm. Come on, man. <laughs> it's, it's the Modex Pod Show. That's why he has I don't no... know what you're doing with like five guests is too much. I'll just... Well, <laughs> well, all right, we'll just cut you all out. Right, we'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to grab you real quick because I'm sure most people listening listen to Pulp. They've seen the the um, press day videos, you, interviews you did with Eli. They heard Eli last night. Um, yeah, man, are you, where's where's the friendship, the relationship with Lewis Phillips and Eli Tomac right now? Well, what a question, and one that I've pondered <laughs> myself. Um, no, I think it's all been blown out of proportion. Slightly. Okay. Not helped by the comments of last night. That's not like which, the Moto Media. 
it's not even the motor media, though, is it? <laughs> it's just kind of like it's a sport built on emotions at the end of the day. Yeah. Let's be honest. Um, I what do I say? I would say first of all, it sucks that the sport is in this place where if you ask if you just ask fairly normal questions, like I asked him about his start. I wasn't asking him about anything deep, anything meaningful, anything um, like risque. But uh, yeah, it just sucks that then you get painted in a bad light. Um, so it sucks that that, like, I, I guess from now on, I'll go back to, do you like being in Boston? <laughs> and then the following week, do you like being in Nashville? <laughs> and then you see where I'm going with this. Yes. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, like, like the one thing that I feel like I should defend myself on is he said on Pulp that I just kept asking, no, no, no. I was asked, I asked him a general question about starts as a whole. Not that if his starts were not a part of that at all, but he was obviously on the defensive for some reason um, and heard what he wanted to hear. So I, it was a miscommunication at the end of the day. Um, I was asking one thing, he heard another, and then obviously got quite emotional about it because he just chose not to speak. Um, whereas- yeah, and I, I, I talked to you point. all. You and I talked, uh, you know, over the last couple of days, and the the broadcast had an interview with him with the the girl. I can't remember. It wasn't Haley. It wasn't a regular. It was the girl that was on this last weekend where she did an interview with him. She, she asked about starts also. Like I feel like he's been getting asked about his starts a lot, and for some reason. Maybe yeah, he hasn't got good starts in the last. Yeah, like, four I guess games. maybe I mean, when it when you asked Lewis, it was just enough was enough or something. But yeah, he. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't Lewis. really agree with those comments either on Pulp last night because I listened to your press day interviews on Vitalmx.com, and I didn't really feel like you were going too aggressive or anything. I just it just didn't seem like he really wanted to answer questions that day in general. Yeah, like and I at the end of the day, and I've told everyone this including a phone call I had yesterday about this. Mm -hmm. I love criticism because I want to be the best that I can be, as does anyone with anything they do. So, like, I've had lots of riders, well, lots might be an exaggeration. I've had riders in the past go, like, didn't like how you asked this. And I'm like, why? And then we figure it out, and either I go, yeah, I'm wrong, or they go, no, actually, you're right. I was just reading into it wrong. Yeah. And I like that because that's, I like that. That's cool, isn't it? Like, that's progress. Um. So, but the the being left hand to hang out and dry just caused confusion, and confusion that I still have to this very moment, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I don't think I don't think that Eli is genuinely that big a fan of me or the media, to be honest. Maybe it's not even me. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm in the media. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it got blown out of proportion a little bit, I think. But it was it's because there were other moving parts which seem to now be separate to this, but people got confused and felt this was all one thing. So I feel like it got blown out of proportion for that matter. Um, Time, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Time heals all wounds. I mean, Dark Side pissed him off before too, and we had, we had him back on, so. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not actually sure that I pissed him off. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm that confused. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if, like, come Boston, I actually don't know if, I go up to him and act as if it's all normal, but is it? I don't know. Do I stay away because he wants me to stay away? I don't know. So I need to get clarification on that. Um, and yeah, it's just confusing. Um, it's yeah. just confusing. Like, that's, that's a good point. Expect, there are obviously questions that you would never ask. Sure. And you would expect a negative response from. Um, but like, yeah. Just, just, let's just go up to him and be like, I noticed your bike is blue. Do you like the color blue? <laughs> 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 I'm just, I'm just, it's just a lot, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's mental that this goes on in my mind. Like, it's you, mental that this get, can get blown up like mm-hmm. this when it was really quite a minor um, incident. I mean, again, maybe it wasn't a minor incident. <laughs> maybe, yeah. I, maybe I misunderstood it completely. I don't think it, it was that big of a deal. A major incident. Yeah, I don't um, think it was that big of a deal. And I think, yeah, in two weeks, uh, I think everything, when you go, if he's at press day, you're doing your I job. Think it'll be fine. Um, yeah, it is what it is. At the end of it, like, I, I realized that there's always going to be the miscommunication because um, I actually spoke to Kiefer about this yesterday. Like, the English tone is uh, blunt, I think. I don't uh-huh. know if you'd have to tell me because I'm used to it. Um, 
but I think it is more blunt than um, than American tone, I guess, and that can maybe get misconstrued as an act of aggression, aggression sometimes. But to be honest, I've tried. I've, I've tried work. I'm working on that, like working on getting rid of the Englishness. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, you can take the bread out of Britain. I, I will say. <laughs> You know, Lewis and I talk every day, and he is constantly evaluating himself and saying, like, I want to be better, and not only in work, but he's like, if if he sees criticism of his self, he does, you, intro, uh, what's the word, intro, introspectively look yeah. at himself and say, well, maybe I need to adjust this. So, like, I, he is, Lewis is always trying to be better in all aspects. So, you have to respect that, I think. Um, you know, so, um, you, he, you also, though, get inside your head, a little too much on certain things, but that's just your personality. I don't think that can be changed. Well, no, obviously, and obviously it's just, it's sad that Eli felt this way. That's the, that's yeah. the crux of it. It's sad that, well, whether it was an accident or I did it on purpose or um, like whatever it comes under, it's sad that it ended with Eli feeling uh, annoyed or sad or whatever yeah. emotion you yeah. want to use to describe it. So we just, we put our heads down and we try to get better. Well, speaking of getting better, the MXGP podcast that you do with uh, Adam, uh, uh, that's it, almost said Adam Bailey. Uh, why am I blanking? Jesus. Who's your co-host? Oh, you having, having a good night? Wheeler, good? Adam Wheeler. Um, it's been a long week. Yeah. In Lewis. <laughs> is it, I, <laughs> that thing gets better and better every week. And I, I think I overheard you. Is Hurling's on this, this week's episode? Uh, pending. But pending. You, okay. Most likely. It, like, wait, who, like who knows the times might not add up but as long as the times add up yeah. and is that being recorded tomorrow no because the race hasn't happened yet oh, I thought you were doing a pre one like a, a, what you're oh, no 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 there's not one this week oh okay it. there's not one this week okay okay so coming up then yeah that, that'd be good the, the last interview you did with Hurlings was unreal so I can't wait to hear him on like a I'm just, I, I can't do one this week I'm, I'm licking my wings <laughs> okay. All right. Well, time. But I, no, but honest, like, my final thoughts. If it, my final thoughts. Yeah. Are it is all just confusing, isn't it? Like not just not the Eli situation, but the way the media is perceived in general. Like it's all, it's all confusing. It's not like other sports. Like I would actually love. You know what? I might work on this. Okay. I would love to do a podcast with someone who covers F one and talk to them about how it works in our sport and how it works in their sport and make comparisons and see like what we tell them about our sport. And they go, what? Yeah. yeah. I'd listen to that. And vice versa. Yeah. That would be entertaining. And I, I would listen to that. It would probably, they would be mind blowing, blown at how secretive and how, um, soft maybe some of the writers are mm -hmm. when like they get their feelings hurt. Or they, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little, it's unusual for a professional sport. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. It's just sad. Like it's sad <laughs> that it's sad that we end up in these situations. But yeah. you know what? It happens. You got to put your head down. You've got to regroup, and you've got to come out swinging. Come out swinging. All right, Lewis. We're gonna wrap this up. We are at three hours, seven minutes, and eleven seconds. It's time to wrap this thing up. Yeah, you need to go back to two guests every week. Well, I don't think you have it in. I don't think you can limit the time of the show with three guests. <laughs> I think hey, three guests is fine because it works for the sponsor reads. All but. of our listeners are like they're they're probably they probably love this because I don't know if all of them. The, well, the, the chat YouTube, our YouTube the, viewers, yeah. like yeah, our, like, our hardcore, longer, the better, yeah, our hardcore viewers love it. But yeah, um, I mean, whenever you're listening to a podcast that you enjoy every week and like it's it's over, you're like, oh man, it's over. I gotta. Well, as usual, I'm hungry though, so it's time to wrap it up. What a burger time! So we're gonna call it. But Lewis, <laughs> thanks for jumping on here and uh, giving us your thoughts on it. Yeah, goodbye. Okay, bye, buddy. See you. We'll talk tomorrow. See you. All right, bye. bye. Thanks, yeah, we Lewis still, Phillips. We, we, still, we still love you, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis is great. All right, we're going to wrap this thing up. We will be back next week. We have a show, as I said, as of now. Seth Hamaker, RJ Hamshire, Aiden Kiefer are locked in. I want to thank our presenting sponsors, Race Tech and Yamaha Motor USA. Also, Guts Racing, FXR. X, FXR actually sent me a nice care package with some casual stuff. Sent some shirts for Amber, so she's hooked up. Pretty cool. Vital MX Fantasy. I'm playing the little scroll thing right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, Vital MX Fantasy. Guys, it's fun, man. It's really cool. It's different than the other Vital um, Fantasy games. If you haven't heard, you basically get a million-dollar budget per week. 
you have to pick at least one rider from each class. Each rider is assigned a value, say Jet Lawrence might be $180,000 of your budget for that week. And you pick as many riders as you can within your budget, and you get whatever points they get that week. So if they win, mm -hmm. you know, you get 25, uh, you know, whatever. So um, it's, yeah. it's kind of cool. So, uh, you know, you try to spread your, your money around. Maybe you get a couple cheaper guys that you're hoping are going to get I, some I would do like I'd get like nothing but 10 to 15, 10 to 20 guys. <laughs> well, yeah, but those guys don't always make the main, you know, yeah. especially this year. So, but it's a cool game. Moto X Pod Show does have its own league within the Vital and Mixed Fantasy game. Go sign up. There's cool prizes. Uh, anyway, back to our the rest of our sponsors, X-Brand Goggles, Pro X, EVS Protection, Troll Training, Evans Coolant, Blood Lubricants, Barnett Clutches, we thank all of them. We thank our listeners. We thank our YouTube viewers. MotoXPodShow at gmail.com. We're out. <laughs>